We go off oh, into the unknown. Oh, oh, I don't think any of us know what to expect, including those that are about to take the green. 500 laps here, you just never know what's going to happen. But one thing we do know is going to happen, they're getting ready to drop that green flag. And boogity, 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 we're going to go racing on a Monday, boys. Very orderly, no contact through one and two. Same for three and four. Yeah, I don't see anything uh, real weird happening. That uh, extra substance they put on the track this morning doesn't seem to have affected it much at all. The guys are getting right to it without any problem. Well, I think if anything, it has a lot more group than a lot of drivers are expecting. We saw Chase Elliott really make some ground up on Kyle Larson down the back straightaway through that first corner. Kyle Larson was a little bit cautious. Then he saw in his mirror how much uh, he was gaining. He moved down to the bottom. Now you just saw Martin Truex get a better drive off the bottom of turn two than Blaney did off the top. And Jimmy Johnson was stuck oh. three wide for a minute. And he's kind of backing up everybody down in one and two. Yeah, that, they, that 48 car is loose as a goose. I mean, he's all over the place. And he's got cars all around him that, he, that are wanting to get by. Cars that seem to be really good here on the long runs are those that turn the middle really good or really loose in and off as we see a change for third place here. Mark Trix Jr. Fast race car early in the race and hook in the bottom. That's the key Mike. That is the key. You've got to get right down up next to the apron. Get those left sides there as we see McMurray trying to make a move to the inside. McMurray and he looking makes there. It. Going. Got him. That's by Ryan Blaney. Fifth place. I think that bottom is going to be the way to go for a while, but I tell you, it doesn't take long. A couple hundred laps are going to wear that substance off. It's going to be up to the top. Well, and also, DW, it's going to lay rubber. As it lays rubber, you start skipping on top of that rubber. There's grip, and then there's no grip. And that's where, again, the variables that, that have been plagued uh, here at Bristol for these drivers and teams are going to continue. And by now, seven laps in, the bottom is truly the preferred groove. We see uh, Eric Jones, Jimmy Johnson, uh, Eric Almirola backing up in the high on the high side. Well, one thing we saw in practice, and I think we're seeing here in the race, once you got a little heat in the tires, they really adhered to that to substance they put down, the grip strip. And I think that's what we're seeing, heat in the tires. Now you can get down there and go. Well, I, I mean, I, it's been a long time since I've been to Bristol, and I've seen every single car right against the apron. I mean, this truly is old school Bristol right now. What's Kyle Larson going to do when he finally does catch the tail end of this field? I know what he did on Saturday. You know, he had a car to beat here. He started on the pole, set a new track record on Saturday for the Xfinity cars. Oh, he lapped the cars. He lapped them all the way up to eighth place. Sorry, DW. 22 no, Logano got into turn three, got real loose, and went up the racetrack, lost several positions. That's the thing about this joint, Jeff. You can see every car all the time. Let's have a look. And what happened to Joey Logano getting into three on the right side of your screen? Ooh. Hard to say. It looked like he just drove in there pretty deep behind Trevor Bain and, and lost. I don't know if he lost the back of the car, but that's what I would anticipate right there. That's that's uh, and as we see a change for second place here. Mark Trix Jr. going by Chase Elliott. 78 car looks mighty steamy right now. Got by Elliott and, uh, you know, Larson's way out there, but that 78 is fast. <laughs> Truex fastest car on the racetrack. And Logano recovers and drops in just in, in front of Trevor Bain. Now it's Casey Kane up on the high side. He's going to get freight train first by Denny Hamlin. Now he's got to battle Eric Jones. Mike, I'm just not, if your car is real good right now, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> I don't think it is. I don't think that's a very good thing. I think thing. this tra track is going to change a lot throughout this run and throughout this race. Now, Clint Boyer in the 14 just gave up a spot to his teammate, Kurt Busch. But that car just doesn't have a lot of drive up off the corner. And up in the high groove, he's going to give up a couple more. Well, I think what Jeff is saying, and I think what we know from a past experience here, as the rubber builds up in that lower lane, the cars are going to tighten up. You want a car to be a little free. The crew chief always says it'll come to you. Well, just don't wreck it till it does. And I also think, DW, what they saw in the Xfinity race on Saturday was that bottom groove was only there for a period of time. And then the top group came in. To be good on the top, you've got to... Uh, have the car turning really good up there. They're anticipating that top coming in, but it has not come in yet. Now Chase Elliott is third, but he had difficulty lapping Reed Sorensen. The lap cars uh, have kind of moved up high, Timmy Hill and Reed Sorensen, uh, but down in the corner, they want some of that grip too, so they're going to drop down. And uh, there you see Ryan Blaney making the move on Sorensen. And here comes Kyle Busch. As long as those lap cars are looking in their mirrors, there should not be a problem. 
Chris Buescher had to start in the back with a backup car. So he started 39th. He's picked up 11 positions. Mike, here's where you get into trouble here. The 42 car of Larson, he's caught the back of the field. That's going to slow him down. That's going to allow Truex and all these other cars to catch up to him. That's what you fight here. Laugh cars, lose your momentum, and here comes somebody from way, way back that you got to deal with. And just as you say that, DW, look at that. Kyle Larson realized it's going to be really challenging to get by these lap cars on the bottom following them. I've got to move up top. He moved up top and checked it out down in three and four, and he moved right back to the bottom in the next corner. Now, there is a line of six cars just in front of him, and they're all bottom feeders. So Larson, to lap them, is going to have to stay up high. Mike, in practice, remember on the Friday and Saturday, Larson was the only guy that would venture up to the top. He was trying to get that top groove to come in for him, for himself. And again, he shows the way to the rest of the field here in this race. He's the first one up there. He's making it work. Look at the momentum he gets off the corner by using that top groove. I think this is going to work fine until he gets to Landon Castle in 30th place because Castle's running the high line. That might be a chance for Larson to drop down low unless Danica Patrick catches Castle and puts him too wide when the leader gets there. I remember what Kozlowski said about Larson when he was up running that high line. He said, well, he's going to go down swinging. <laughs> Kyle Larson, your leader in Bristol. Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Racing is presented by KFC's new spicy crispy zinger chicken sandwich. It's finger looking good and is sponsored by Carfax. Find the cars you want, avoid the ones you don't, shop used cars with confidence at Carfax.com. 32 laps complete. We said it could get dicey when leader Kyle Larson caught Landon Castle if they were too wide. Uh, they were not, but look at the drive. Castle gets off the high side. Now there's a lapped car just ahead. What is Kyle Larson going to do? And he's going to go all the way to the bottom and get past Reed Sorensen, using Sorensen as a pick. Right now, that 42 car kind of goes where he wants to. He can run the bottom, make passes. He can go high and run passes. What's he saying, Matt? Early on, he's saying the car's a little bit on the free side. His team told him to either adjust with the brake bias in the front or use the track bar adjuster. A lot of teams are using the 42 as the gauge of when to move up, and they're all noting that he's running the bottom down in one and two, going up high in three and four, only migrating up top to try to pass a lap car. And that seems to be the key, Jeff. He's he's passing them wherever he catches them. Yeah, well, and he's driving hard. I mean, yeah. he's really putting a lot. He's putting a lot of pressure on those tires. They could wear out in a hurry. 78 and some of these guys behind him could catch up. Yeah, remember, he did this exact same thing in the Xfinity race. He, he put a lot of cars a lap down early 
but he has such a good race car right now. He can run top, bottom. He can turn from the middle of the top and cut down and get a big drive off the bottom as well. But the 48's doing pretty good, too. He's, he's working his way up there now. What's he saying about Kyle Larson? Doing a good job. Keep your options open. Think about that outside if we need to try to get there. 42 is running 1590s, running the top because nobody else is. He's able to pass everybody. Kyle, hi up. Third groove. Jamie? And Chad Canales talked to his driver, Jimmy, and said, try adjusting the brake bias and use your track bar. That could help your traction so you can move up a bit. And Jimmy just saying he's really free in the three, but working so he can get around. Yeah, Jamie, I've seen that 48 car sideways probably more than anybody else. And, uh, you know, he's not in jeopardy of going a lap down, but our leader's at the line right now, and Jimmy's coming off turn two. And you look at second and third. Chase Elliott back to second. Martin Truex not having any grip up on the high side. Has to go back to the bottom to close up on Elliott, who has trouble dealing with David Reagan here. Well, what I see with a 42 car, Jeff, is he's aggressive. He doesn't play around. He catches somebody, he goes by on the high side, low side. Seems to me like Truex and even McMurray back here just a little bit are being a little more cautious, taking their time, and not putting themselves in any jeopardy whatsoever. Yeah, that, I mean, you've got to be decisive. When you come up on these lap cars, you've got to make a decision. Do I go low? Do I go high? This is where that dirt track experience really comes in for a guy like Kyle Larson. He won a dirt race. Uh, uh, I think it was Wednesday or something. He's running a sprint car and won a race in. But he knows how to make slide jobs. You hear a lot about slide jobs. I think they're fantastic to watch. Car goes in. Now here, he's able to just roll around the bottom, be real patient, get that run up off. But he's been diving by him, going in the corner, sliding up as Jimmy Johnson slides underneath Trevor Bain. Larry, if your driver's not Kyle Larson, what kind of guidance, what kind of help can you give him at this stage? Well, about all you can do is what we've already heard, is let him know what Kyle Larson is doing up there. And that's what I'm seeing. The second groove has no rubber. It's the third groove that's starting to get some rubber. But that's all you can do is just let them know where the drivers that are a little quicker are maybe like Kyle Larson leading the race, what he's doing what he's running on the stopwatch and where he's running. Larry, what I see with that 42 car, Larson, he doesn't, nothing holds him up. His lap times haven't varied very much at all. He's been able to get right through traffic and not be held up by some of these lap cars. Three drivers have done a good job of working the top here. Larson, as we've mentioned, Ryan Blaney and Kevin Harvick have both tried the top side with some success down in turns one and two. Now we're at 46 laps, 14 laps from now. NASCAR will toss a competition caution and give the teams a chance to work on things.
Ouch. We are under caution at Bristol at lap 54. Uh, Kurt Busch, the first car to go around, not sure if he got tagged, but he had damage against the inside wall. He ran the back of that 15 car. They were uh, all slowing uh, down for the wreck down there in, in the, the 37. Yeah, the yeah. 37 got in the back of him. I think he may have wheel hop trying to slow down. Oh, you see just a little bit of contact. Kurt Busch trying to get underneath Trevor Bain, I believe that was, and the car comes around. Well, there's a lot of grip in the corners, not a lot of grip once you get off that traction strip. And then later, yeah, come, come along later. You see Kurt spinning. Yeah, that's A.J. Allmendinger. Allmendinger goes by, back behind him. And here's Kurt Busch. I'm so sorry. I thought I was taking it so easy on it. That's, uh, that's my bad. We're probably all done. So apparently no contact between he and Casey Kane. I heard Kurt Busch say that at Martinsville three or four years ago. Came back and won the race. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, think that's, I think that's fixable. I don't know if they'll win the race, but it's fixable. Now, Chris Busher, after piling into the back of Reed Sorensen as uh, things were trying to slow down there. I think that Ned Busher's second car. Yes, that yeah. was a backup car. Backup car. And he was coming. He made his way uh, pretty well through the field. At one point, he had gained the most positions. You know, one thing I've seen happen here when there's an accident like that and everybody checks up, uh, you a lot of times can get wheel hop. Even here at Bristol, you don't think about that, but I've had it happen. And once it starts at this fast racetrack, it's a handful, and you lose full control and can't slow the car down. We are at lap 56. NASCAR's decreed this will be considered the competition caution. No point throwing another one at lap 60. So now teams will be able to come in for Goodyear tires, so don't go race fuel. And uh, they, this team is determined. Now they're on the five minute crash clock. They're determined to get Kurt Busch back out there. I think he'll be fine. I think to get that thing patched up, he'll be okay. Very unique pit road here at Bristol. Martinsville used to be this way a long time ago, where you pitted on both the front side and the back side. You must enter the pits at turn two if you're pitting under caution and exit at turn one so that everybody travels the full distance of both pit roads. And some of those segments are pie shaped, which makes maintaining pit road time over distance speed a little difficult. Now, if you pit under green, you can enter the pits on your side of the racetrack, wherever your pit is, and exit on the same side. Mike, I've seen the best drivers in the world get this <laughs> here and maybe make that going. mistake every now and then. As if the variables here and the challenges aren't enough, let's change up the pit road for <laughs> under green as well. It, <laughs> it is one of the trickiest places to race at. Now, the pits are still closed because they were removing Chris Busher's car from the entrance to the backstretch pits. It came to rest uh, down on the apron in turn number two. And you saw him go to the uh, ambulance for the mandatory trip to the care center. And a good bit of safety clean oil dry there being put down. We got an interesting situation here. Remember, we know that this stage will end at lap 125. So you know you're probably going to pit then. I think we're going to see a lot of different strategies here. Yeah, I think most of the leaders will go with four Goodyear tires. But if you're in the back fighting for track position, maybe roll the dice and try just right sides. But no matter what, don't hold my stop up waiting for fuel. We know we have that end of stage one at lap 125. It makes a lot of sense to me, Larry. Throw me two tires on and get me out of here. Uh, Kurt Busch is rolling, and it's a good thing because not only was he on the five-minute clock, he had 15 seconds of his time taken away because of an improper entry into the pits. So due to our abbreviated pre-race, uh, we didn't get a chance for our AARP keys to the drive. And let's see if they open pit road. If not, we'll go to those. And pit road's open. Here they come. Chris. And Jamie McMurray very happy with his race car. Unlike his teammate, he can only run the bottom lane. And in just the last few laps, he said the front end of that car starting to give up. A little bit further down, Kyle Busch saying the track very different than it was on Saturday. Just no grip here today. The back end too loose. Jamie. And Martin Trucks Jr. said he fired off quick and then it went away. So not a terrible balance. Pretty happy with it. Four tires stop here and they'll fill him up for Truex, who was second. Vince. 
Chase Elliott started second, pits from third, had a little contact in the left rear, so they'll pull the left rear, but no other changes for tires and fuel, Matt. Ryan Blaney skirted trouble on the grid when he had to equalize right front tire. He was able to legally swap the sticker for a sticker. His car, much on the tight side, cutting the corner, uh, and then lose late exit. Meanwhile, the 42 of Larson, his comments mirror Saturday's Xfinity race. Loose during the first run, able to move around. Chassis adjustment on the 42. Boy, 30 miles an hour looks very slow down pit road, doesn't it? Yeah, all four, everybody took four tires too, Mike. So we're under the first caution of the day for Kurt Busch. Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Racing presented by KFC is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. By Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. 63 laps, they're still cleaning up in turn two. Kurt Busch has made it back out onto the racetrack as we join Jamie Little down at the eBay Motors pit box. Well, Mike, the catchphrase all weekend long and in today's race is BHT or PJ1 track bite. Well, this is what it looks like. The track gave me a little sample here in this nice mason jar. It just looks like some apple juice, but if you open it, I'll tell you, this does not smell good. It's a mixture of alcohol and glue, and if it gets on your fingers, which I've done already, it's much like rubber cement. It's hard to get off, but it's doing exactly what it should. Now, coming into the weekend, the team sprayed it about nine feet wide on the bottom groove. This morning they sprayed it about three feet wide and they put it in a machine that sprays about like this, a fine mist over the rubber that they laid down. So, so far it is doing its job. Mike, as you know, typically here in the spring race, we only race up high, but today we've got the action on the bottom groove. Thank you, home economics lesson from Jamie at the eBay Motors pit box. I think I've seen that track bite in that jars like that before. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different kind of bite. <laughs> <laughs> and it had a bite to it, too. <laughs> Eat the bottom out of a styrofoam cup. All right, they're still cleaning up in turns one and two. Last year, we had two races postponed to Monday. 
Kurt Busch won one of them. They, uh, Busher won the other, and both are involved in this pileup that puts us under caution. Chevrolet, the official vehicle of NASCAR, is the most awarded car company three years in a row. Learn more at Chevrolet.com. Still under caution as track cleanup continues because Busher lost, uh, James Busher lost the contents of his radiator and maybe more down in turns one and two. Now, watch as Kurt Busch's car starts to come around here and gets bounces off the inside wall. All the spotters are thinking right there that it's coming back up on the racetrack. And they tell all their drivers, jam on the brakes, he's going to slide back up. He doesn't get back up the racetrack, but everybody's all woed up. Mike, in all due respect, uh, you run so fast around here, even when the spotter tells you there's trouble, it's just hard, and Jeff knows this, it's just hard to get woed up, and especially if somebody's ahead of you like the 15 was, and now you see the car in front of you stopping, and you just can't stop. Jamie? And that was the first time in Chris Busher's career that he's gone to a backup, and now his day is done, that second car. You just watched the replay. What did you see from within the car? Um, I, uh, I guess I didn't realize there was, uh, I didn't know there was a wreck before that. You know, I know everybody was kept, or, uh, woeing up, and. And Kosh was out and uh, tried to get on the on the brakes and um, they just wheel hopped. So uh, just a pretty big shame. You know, our, our bushes baked being Chevrolet, uh, you know, like like I said, our backup uh, start last and we were, we were rolling through there pretty good. And, um, you know, we're fighting uh, to be in the spot for the lucky dog there. You know, I know we were right there at it and uh, Ty was right there. And, you know, we had found something um, after Larson passed me on the high side, kind of found something doing the same thing and was just starting uh, to pick up a little bit of momentum there. So I, I just. I hate it. You know, I hate it for for this team. How hard they've worked this whole weekend and on Monday for uh, for our race to be cut that short, and you know, I feel like a large part of that's on me. So, got to uh, got to do better better than that on, on my side, and we'll go to Richmond and see if we can uh, go have a good day. Thanks, Chris.
give Chris Buescher a big attaboy because he spent last night and part of this morning helping to resettle campers here at Bristol who had been flooded out by the storms. Well, cleanup continues here. This will be a KFC race break as the red flag is out at Bristol. I would have bet you a dollar. <laughs> we would have had a caution flag in the first 10 laps as everybody tried to deal with, with a varying surface in turns one and two and nobody knowing what to expect. I think because the bottom was clean and they put that uh, traction uh, compound track bite. down, yep. <laughs> track bite, uh, I think there was a lot of grip down there. And so other than the cars that were just maybe set up a little bit too loose, most of the cars really had good traction. I think that's going to change, just like everything else changed this weekend. As rubber lays down on the racetrack, now you start getting up on top of that rubber, that's when you're going to start seeing that bottom groove become pretty tricky to, to hmm. hold on to, especially on colder tires. But, Daryl, does this change how the leaders have to negotiate lap traffic? I think Kyle Larson was reckless abandoned. I mean, he was just passing where he caught him, high, low. He didn't really care. That's a kid with a lot of talent and no fear, and he showed that in that first run right there. So, uh, yeah, I, I think the racetrack's going to change, but I want to brag on my drivers. I tell you, you throw anything at these guys. They, they did something this racetrack, and the guys hadn't even had a lap around there. And they dropped that green flag, and they did like a bunch of pros. They handled it with a great deal of just proficiency and got the job done. It was an awesome start to the race as we went almost 60 laps before the first caution flag for Kurt Busch. Kyle Larson is your leader, the first of 33 cars on the lead lap. It was uh, Ty Dillon will get the free pass on this caution. And I think there are 11 drivers in position to take the wave around once we get ready to go green. Joey Logano has a special guest riding on the roof of his car. You'll see his name above the right side window and in his pit today. Here's Matt Yoakum. Mike, last fall, Joey Logano and 60 members from the NASCAR community attended a funeral for a huge NASCAR fan, Jake Leatherman, a little boy who lost his battle with leukemia. The impact, Joey and wife Brittany created a new program called the JL Crew within their foundation. They invite kids battling life-threatening and severe challenges to the races. This weekend, Cameron Curtis is the first recipient. He and Joey watched the Xfinity race on Saturday in the stands, attended the driver's meeting, met a lot of drivers at driver's intro, and even more, they had cool matching driver suits, proving no sport tops NASCAR in helping families and kids. And honored to say that guy sitting near you with the red tie, Jeff Gordon, for many years, he was the number two requested make a with Ashley in North America. So much giving back in our sport. What a cool kid, what a cool story. There's just nothing like this, this racing community. Cameron Curtis, glad to have him here with us. At Bristol this weekend. Boy, the sweepers are out in force. I think there's <laughs> as many track sweepers working turn two as we have air titans. Even a bit of uh, agricultural equipment there with a broom on the front down working the track apron. And guess what, Mike? <laughs> this changes everything again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, I, I mean, think that's, that's going to be the theme of the day. <laughs> I tell you, it's just another something you're throwing at these guys that they got to deal with at high rate of speed. You get around here, in, you know, 15 and a half seconds. That's incredible. Well, one of the things they get to deal with and get to adjust in addition to the track bar is brake bias. Larry? Yeah, we've already heard Jamie Little and Matt Yoakum both report about crew chiefs telling their driver, adjust your brake bias. Let's use our Ford cutaway car, and this is the cockpit of the race car. There's the brake bias knob right there, because these cars have two brake systems. You have a front brake system and a rear brake system, so that driver can move that knob to give it more front brake or move it to give it more rear brake. If the car is loose getting in the corner, which happens a lot here, give it a little more front brake. If it's a little bit tight and won't turn on the braking, you can give it a little more rear brake. So just another tool that the driver has inside the car that he can adjust on. Yeah, Larry, even to add to that, as we've talked before, a lot of these teams are even using uh, different brake pads, calipers in one corner of the race car, or maybe even a valve that sort of shuts off that corner a little bit to even uh, be more specific in that brake bias. I, uh, Jeff, I've seen these guys are so aggressive with rear brakes. I see it all the time. You see when they make a pit stop, the rear tires lock up, the fronts don't. But there's good news and bad news. That rear brake bias can help you maybe get your car to turn a little bit better. But if you see what happened to Chris Buscher right there, when you got a lot of rear brake in that car and you have to jump on those brakes like he did, you get the wheel hop. And that's, that's, that's kind of a trade-off, but that's what can happen. 
two laps and we'll go back to racing. The yellow flag is back out and pit road is closed. So now, Jeff, let's get our AARP keys to the drive. And I know we've talked a lot about these already, but adjust. Track conditions are changing constantly. So adjusting your line and staying ahead with the car adjustments will be really important. Uh, and while it's really easy to get caught up in a wreck here, you're going to have to avoid trouble that leads to a solid finish. And finally, after uh, each of these laps are so intense, drivers experience a lot of G-forces through these fast corners and have very little time to breathe and hydrate. So physical conditioning is going to be very important for success today. 69 laps complete. Stage one is 125 laps, so 56 to go in stage one. 13 drivers took the wave around, so we will restart with 33 drivers on the lead lap. Let's get back to racing, boys. Yeah. I love racing here. It is, I mean, and I love the unpredictability that's going on today. I mean, it is just so fun to watch who's versatile, who is able to adapt quickly to these changes. changes. Wondering if the oil dry will affect the grip at the bottom of turn two, where there was a lot of put down. We'll see. Here's some uh, audio from Eric Jones' team. Your, your magic eight ball didn't tell you on exactly what lap it was going to heat up and come around. I was kind of watching it, but it's too late. Well, I couldn't get him down soon enough. Uh, you need to know like one lap early, huh? My, my eight ball definitely doesn't work that good. Whatever, you'll be fine, but you're going to calm Eric down. Am I going to have to talk to you and calm you down up there? Long way to go, Rick. Long way. Crew Chief Chris Gale talking to Spotter and uh, former standout in the truck series, Rick Corelli. It's a total team effort. I mean, yep. everybody has a role that plays an important role to not just winning, but surviving here at Bristol. The High Plains Drifter. Yep, yes he was. Rick Corelli. He might be able to use that in the later stages of this race. All right, Larson's chosen the outside groove. Again, we saw the inside was the way to go. Can Truex take advantage of that here? Truex has been a bottom feeder all day so far, right down around the track apron. Yeah, he moved up one time and lost almost two positions when he did it. Should be pretty evenly matched here into turn one. Let's see how it plays out. Green flag. Great start by Larson. He's going to be able to pick whatever lane he wants. I think that was his plan, Jeff. I think he knew he'd probably get a little jump on that start. Oh, Jamie man. McMurray in a little trouble getting through one and two on the bottom. Here comes Keselowski making it three wide. Whoa. Boy, Kyle Busch was held up by, uh, by McMurray, but man, he went to the outside and passed him and went on. And uh, Keselowski was a gentleman. He backed out to allow that to sort out and paid the price. Lost three, now four positions. I think when you got a good race car, you know you got a good race car, you kind of give and take at this point of the race. You know, a little bit of, of what I was talking about, and I think this will continue to happen throughout the race where some drivers just were not able to hold the bottom. A little more rubber laid down this time, and they're jumping up out of the groove as we see the 21 of Blaney get go up the racetrack. Matt? It's been an issue all weekend for Blaney in the 21. He says when he gets in the center of the corner, he has to give it a little bit more move turning the wheel because the power steering pump seems to slow down a little bit. It's similar frequency, what he's experienced all weekend, so the concern is not high at this juncture. Uh -huh. He just kind of got outmaneuvered right there. The 18 of Kyle Busch and the one, they kind of took advantage of the 18 to cut under uh, the 21 of Blaney and was able to get a, get a, make a nice move right there. And you know, that could be a bit of a common thing, him talking about the, the power steering pump. So this place pulls so much load and has so much grip, especially in the front suspension, that it, the power, uh, power steering pump can't handle all the loads we go to the restart. Watch the one of Jamie McMurray right here. It looks like he pushed. He was talking about being tight. He pushed up off the bottom, had to check up so he didn't uh, get into somebody else, and that created this three-wide situation. I mean, back to your power steering situation, Jeff, you talk about, I've had that happen on low air pressure. You drop those left side tire pressures way down, that box kind of sticks until the pressure builds up. And Darrell, I liked your analogy about not pressing the issue at this point. Nobody's going to win this race on lap 75. No, but you sure can lose it. Yeah, you can get yourself in so much trouble, you'll be in the garage with Chris Buescher. McMurray loose off to Denny Hamlin. Almost got into him. Hamlin says enough of that and moves on. And Mike, remember, these straightaways are 650 feet long. That's all they are. So you don't have a lot of straightaway here to work with. Hard to tell if McMurray's struggling with loose or tight. He was talking about being really tight, no front grip on that first run, but 
Boy, he's really struggling keeping it on the bottom. Look at this tight squeeze between teammates. You got Eric Jones going the inside of Mark Truex Jr. What, what an incredible run this young man is having. Won the Xfinity race on Saturday. Whoa, Stenhouse sticking his nose in three wide. Coming off a of turn four, that's not going to work. Stenhouse said it worked at Martinsville. <laughs> <laughs> Watch him. He was so fast here last August on the restarts. He could go anywhere he wanted, but especially to the outside and had a loose race car, but he really was making up spots on the restart. So he will be aggressive all day. AJ Allmendinger's had a lot of success here. He moves up to 10th. Uh, McMurray goes to the high side. He's going to lose at least one more spot here. Chris. Boy, Jamie McMurray's car, very different than it was that first one. He was pretty happy with it, saying he didn't have a lot of front grip near the end of the last run, but this time he said, I don't have any grip at all, and I especially can't touch the throttle. The back end just jumping out. Wow. I, I, think, that, I think that's bad on this start. I think these cars are going to tighten up like we mentioned earlier. So I think being a little loose on the get-go, I mean, you don't want to lose that many spots like McMurray did, but that's not a really terrible thing if we go green for a long time. The car will tighten up, and that'll that'll work out of it. And especially if that top groove ever does come in, I think that can work really well for him. But, yeah, he's going to definitely need a long run, like you said, DW. you got a couple of the Fords working that top groove. you got uh, Blaney, who's been up there a good part of the day. I, I don't know if he's up there by choice. Well, right there's that. Uh, Keselowski and Al Marola all trying the top side. It's Dale Earnhardt Jr. running 18th for second place. Here comes Eric Jones. Remember, he won Saturday's race. Yeah, he's past looking. Chase Elliott. It's going to bring Truex with him, maybe. Looking really, really good right now. Yep, Eric Jones just might win Sunday's or right. Monday's race the way it's going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Car looks awesome right now, and he is. Now, what I'd like to see Chase Elliott think about, he looked in his mirror and maybe saw the 22 diamond the racetrack right there. He's stuck on the outside. Go ahead and experiment right now. Go ahead. And, you know, I know it's a little risky, but there's no grip in the center of the corner. There's grip down low, and there's some grip way up high. Now he dives back to the bottom behind Truex. But watch Logano really working that diamond groove in, uh, in line. And not just Logano, Ryan Newman yeah, has Newman. made some bold moves early. He's coming. He's in sixth place right behind Logano. Newman's got a really nice race car running the bottom and uh, really making some good time. I like the way his car looks right now. Pretty fast. Our Phoenix winner and uh, talked to Richard Childress the other night. Richard is so pumped up about these teams. He thinks they're on the verge of breaking out and winning a lot of races. And behind this battle, look for the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. He just passed Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch has been the best race car here all weekend long. And, and Jimmy's cars looked really, really strong rolling through the center. We heard uh, Chad Knauss talking to him earlier. He's going to go to the inside of his teammate, uh, Chase Elliott. That car is glued to the bottom right now. And Jimmy Johnson dropped as far back as 19th in the early going. Now he's climbed to sixth. We're going to keep it right here for you with 32 to go in stage one.
100 three laps complete at Bristol Kyle Larson has led them all new second place car is Martin Truex passing his teammate Eric Jones for second place and now working uh, Matt Benedetto lap car but it has been all Kyle Larson at the start of this. Okay, I'm, guys, I'm getting pretty concerned about the 21 of Ryan Blaney here. I think it's a lot more than just handling. I think that power steering is becoming an issue. He's dropped way back. Matt, what do you have on that? Jeff, his day has certainly taken a turn for the worst. He cannot run the bottom. They have a backup power steering pump in their pit box. His day just not good on the 21. I can't run the bottom. Oh, I have to stay here. Copy. Dude, I can't even turn the thing. That's all right. I figured you went up. Boy, it looks like that steering is binding on well, him as could, the pump you, you, catches and releases. You can see his hands vibrating on the well, wheel. Not just That's that. Just, look where he look positions. At that Watch where he positions his left hand. He's getting some some uh, angle. On. Oh, look at him opening up his fingers. I mean, he's cramping up. He's putting everything he had. Look at him take another swing on that steering wheel. He's in big trouble. I know we had a day of rest. They didn't do it. We didn't get to race yesterday, but he ran 300 laps here on Saturday. But you get into this race, conditioning is always but a factor. But DW, all the rest of the world is not going to help you with no power steering. Oh at no, this but place. I'm just saying it adds to it. The three hundred laps every Saturday, uh, this, you're, you're already. This uh, is going to be tough. If, if you ever on your streetcar had a power steering belt cut, it was harder to steer than if you had manual steering. I mean, because you have to work against the pump to be able to steer the car. That is hard. Yeah, you could run the, with no power steering here if you want to run about 20 second laps. <laughs> And about 250 laps. Yeah, don't ask me how I know. <laughs> Let's go back to 17th and get a nationwide Dale Jr. performance report from Vince. Yeah, when they came in on that first pit stop, just an air pressure adjustment, fighting a little bit of loose end and tight center off. Junior started 20th. So we only picked up about three spots here in the early going. Come in with a little extra boost in their step after that fifth place finish at Texas, our last race. Finally got something to show for their efforts. It's been a tough start to the season and a big wiggle there from Junior coming off that corner. Yeah, I expected that 88 car to be really good here. It's one of Junior's favorite tracks. They've uh, got a little momentum coming off of Texas. I thought he'd be right up there amongst them, but they uh, got work to do so far. Woo, look wow, at this. Trevor Ooh. Payne thread the needle uh, between Clint Boyer and Corey LaJoy. Gosh, there wasn't any room there. You just don't want to give up those positions. This is where that risk taking and being patient can you know, really challenge you at this stage in the race. It's a long race. I like but the looks of this. Ooh, I don't know either. That's maybe a little bit too early to be battling. I don't like the that. looks of this. Oh, that was a touch. contact right there between Boyer. Oh, that was contact. No, yeah. No, you, know, you know why Boyer didn't that like that? Because Blaney was down on it. Uh, Bain. Bain was down on his door. He wouldn't give him any room. I think it was aggravating Clint Boyer a little bit. As that settles out, another driver that's had difficulty is Brad Keselowski. He was eighth. He is now 18th. That's a shock. Didn't see that coming. Kyle Larson, as he catches faster cars, cars in a higher running position, lapping cars gets more and more difficult. Well, Mike, you lose some of the movability. You, 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 where you can't move the car around like you could when the tires were fresh, now your car takes a little bit longer for it to do what you want it to. So you have to be a little more cautious. Well, and, and, and cars have had the opportunity to adjust a little bit, so they, they figured out the track a little bit better. And they're going to battle and fight to stay on that lead lap. Now, here's two teammates that, that uh, both uh, finished top 10 here last year. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse got a second place finish. Trevor Bain, this is his home track. He was top 10. I've heard Stenhouse say this is his favorite track. And he had some great finishes here in the past. Actually, he scored more points in the last, what, four or five races than anybody. But just, just look how Bain gets down. Like he, when he was trying to get by uh, Clint Boyer, he got right down on his door. This time, uh, Stenhouse is able to get by, but Bain gets right down on that door and holds that car on the inside to the bottom. And well, like there's some urgency here because there's just five laps to go in this stage. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of urgency with Ty Dillon. He's going to try to stay on the lead lap. That's a tough thing to do today to keep uh, Kyle yeah. Larson behind you. I think that's going to work. I think he'll be in the free pass position. Maybe not. It depends if Larson's able to catch Ty's older brother, Austin, who's the next car ahead. This is where it's worth taking some big risks, and that's what Ty Dillon's doing, running higher than anybody on the racetrack, try to find some grip up high. 
Have you ever seen anything quite? Oh, oh the 13 car got into loose stuff. Mm -hmm. Too much risk there. He saved it. He's still yeah, going. There's damage to the right side. A little bit. How much? A little bit. He did a nice job of hanging on to that thing. It road is closed. Two more laps. <laughs> Ty Dillon just got in a little wee bit too high and got in that loose Almost stuff. the exact same thing we saw Larson do in practice when but, he was trying that top groove. But he is still the free pass car. Oh, and in still left. Still right there. Austin now, Dillon. Now it's Austin. Well, Austin's going to fight back, though. This might help his brother Ty Dillon yeah. out. And it does. The hardest things oh, to do right now. I don't Larson know. behind you. Oh, Larson, Larson backed off. And so Austin Dillon stays on the lead lap, and his younger brother Ty is in the free pass position as we end stage one. Kyle Larson, your stage one winner over Truex, Jones, the teammates, Logano, and Johnson. Stage one of the books, it's all Larson. We are at one quarter distance, stage one complete in the 25th anniversary Food City 500 at Bristol. Remember the first one, 1992, Alan Kowicki sat on the pole and drove to victory in what would become his Winston Cup championship season. Great tradition for Bristol Motor Speedway. Started back in 1992. Kyle Larson is our stage winner. He's finished in the top 10 in 14 of 15 stages this season, most of any driver. And remember, Mike, in our opening, we saw cars that were getting in trouble because they missed a grip strip. He was one of them, and uh, they repaired that car. That thing is bad fast.
Larry, how about uh, Ryan Blaney and that power steering problem that he has? Is that something they can address here? Yeah, I mean, they can, Mike. I mean, if it is indeed just the belt, they can put another belt on. Now, it's going to be tough to do that and not go laps down. I just don't know how he can wrestle that thing for another 370 laps. We saw the 22 car of Joy Logano change the whole pump here a few years ago, lost a few laps, but they had a red flag to rehearse on the backup car. Yeah, we went up in a trailer, rehearsed while the red flag was out, and then when the they lifted the red flag, they fixed the car, which that was brilliant. And the 21 is a satellite team of Penske, Team Penske, so a lot of that technology should be available. Jamie. Well, Jimmy Johnson's car has been really solid, and on the last stop, he took an energy bar. He's still hungry, wants another energy bar, and you saw the right rear, just a little bit of damage. He got into Jeffrey Earnhardt, but they don't think there's any rub. Should be okay. They'll take a look at it right here. He says it has really nice front grip for the 48, so it'll be four tires. They already made the air pressure adjustment. The 78, really happy both ends of the racetrack. Once again, four tires and an air pressure adjustment for Martin Truex Jr. Vince? 77 of Eric Jones coming to pit lane as well. Remember, he won the Xfinity race Saturday, and he looked strong here in the early going today, pitting from the third position. Just 20 years old, making his 11th cup start. It's amazing the job he's done. He says it's a little loose on entry, so they'll make a chassis adjustment to snug him up. Matt? Joey Logano's 22, similar to the first run. Tight landing, and they want to work more on the tightness this this run, Todd Gordon's going to make an air pressure adjustment. Great stop by the 42 of Larson. He moves around a lot. They didn't want to make any changes on this 42. There's your race off pit road. Larson holds the lead. Jimmy Johnson moves up a couple of spots as the lap down cars make their stops. We'll keep an eye on the 21. Let's talk to our stage winner. All right. We had a little trouble earlier, Todd. <laughs> Let's try it again. Hey, Kyle, this is Jeff again up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, I got you. Well, man, that was pretty impressive. Uh, it reminds me of what you did Saturday in the Xfinity race. Your car is just capable of going anywhere, putting a lot of cars a lap down. How's it feel? Yeah, it feels good. Uh, this place is so much fun when you can get two grooves or more. Uh, so having a blast. Um, our car is a little loose on the short run, but as we get going, I get I get better and better. So hopefully we can get some long runs here and, and lap some you know, more good cars. I know you like that top groove, and so we're anxious to see if it comes in. But uh, last time you won a stage, or this first stage, guess what? You went on to win the race. That was out in Auto Club. So good luck. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Kyle Larson has led every lap so far. The hood is up on Ryan Blaney's car as they try to make repairs for him. Larson pits, holds the lead.
Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Racing presented by KFC is sponsored by Chevrolet, the most awarded car company three years in a row, and by AARP, Real Possibilities. 135 laps complete. We're ready for stage two. Back to the eBay Motors pit box. Chris Neville. Well, Mike, when these drivers are attacking these high banks here, they're grinding their Goodyear tires into the racetrack, and that's creating small chunks of rubber. And these are the marbles that we're talking about, getting up and off that racing line. And when you get up there, it's kind of like driving from a paved road up onto a gravel road. Just there's no traction. So NASCAR under caution. They're using sweepers to try and clean up that, that line up there. Also drivers picking up a lot of that rubber on the tires when they come to pit lane. And then getting fresh tires to hit the racetrack. Getting ready to go green. Let's take a look at our McDonald's McCafe. Refreshing picks of the race. Two drivers we decided you need to keep an eye on. Well, the blind obvious, Kyle Larson. He's led every one of 136 laps so far. And Martin Truex, the way he hooked the bottom all the way through stage one. Well, they're going to restart on the front row. Who will win stage two? I'm all in on Truex, but I don't know why. Yet, because he's never won a short track race. <laughs> no, but I'm because, all in. But I'm he's, all in. He's really good, though. I've raced wheel to wheel with him here at Bristol, and he's so good around this racetrack. All right, here they come toward the Geico restart zone. I'm going to be really curious once they get some heat in the tires and have to do a restart on hot tires with all that rubber built up. Joey Logano around the outside. Hey now. Logano gets around here pretty sporty. Remember, he's had some difficulty holding that bottom in the early stages of the run. This car is pretty good on the long run, been a little bit loose on the shorter runs. Chase Elliott seems to be pretty good on that outside for a few laps as well. Battling with Truex, Truex gets a little bit loose off the of turn four right there. Boy, right there, Chase did a smart thing. He had opportunity, he dropped to that bottle right in front of Truex. That was a good move. Ninth place. Benny Hamlin, Ricky Stenhouse. And they're double wide all the rest of the field right behind them. Mike, I was talking about uh, Trevor Bain getting down on the door of some of these cars. Remember this lane, this bottom uh, grip strips about a car and a half wide. So you want to keep those left sides when you're on that outside. Keep those left sides down in that black stuff as much as possible. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Great battle going on right here for this position. Stenhouse really working that outside groove not willing to give that up he knows if he could just get ahead of the 11 which you might do right here and get back down to the bottom well, great really battle, great fight really slid it in there into turn three <laughs> he did and here's clint boyer trevor bain closing in vince well, one thing we always know we're going to get at Bristol, that's close quarter racing. Keep an eye on the 14 and the 6. Listen to Boyer's radio. Not happy with Trevor Bain. Six cars. I mean, he's now under the caution. I'm going to wreck his No, he ain't doing that under the caution. Not under the caution. I want you to go down there and tell him. We'll get that little end when it matters. Fine with the stretch me down. It got me loose. Well, he's getting to repay that favor now. Now he's pinning him down on his door. But it's not loosening up Trevor Bain. A little. I don't know. <laughs> Given time. I think Boyer would like to get him behind him <laughs> if he could. I mean, th this is where frustration, you know, can, can sometimes get the best of it. He's battling really hard for that position right now because of what happened earlier. I just, just stay calm right now. Jeff, He's got I a just good race car. Always think here you got to pick your fights. Yeah. You can't get mad every time somebody does something you don't like. Got to wait until it's important, and it's not that important and right I, now. And I say that based on experience of <laughs> losing my my cool with that guy in that 14 car, Clint Boyer. You know, I can't believe this is Eric Jones' first Cup race here. No, well, Look at he sort is of it just, isn't. <laughs> well, okay, that's true. But you know, he filled in for Denny Hamlin. There was a red flag right. here last year two years ago maybe and uh, Denny had a problem with his neck or his back and had to get out of the car who they put in there Eric Jones and I can tell you that day didn't go near as well as this day is going right now and remember he's got two Xfinity wins here so he won here on Saturday so kids got a lot of confidence got a lot of talent I really like this guy so here's what happened two years ago Denny Hamlin uh, back spasms took him out of the car 
and uh, <laughs> he was able to go over there and you know Jared Jones a bit. I mean, Denny was going changes. Yep. Denny was going through a tremendous amount of, of, of health issues, kind of back to back years. There, there's an odd thing that happened. You don't see it happen very often. He seems to be nice and healthy now, and and uh, now you know Eric Jones has his own ride. Vince, what are you hearing? You know, and what makes it even more impressive is Jones is running fifth now, and they're pretty happy with their race car. This is a first-year team with a rookie driver and a rookie crew chief, and it's the first year of front row being a two-car organization. Despite all of those challenges, the 77 group has impressed almost every single week. Remember, they're 14th in points, but they had an accident at Daytona, and they've had pit road issues at three other races. They could be a lot further up the ladder than where they are. Good things to come from this. 77. Yeah, Vince, and what was funny to me, Eric was watching the race at home on TV, and they called him and told him to get to the airport and get up here. Right. Got here, hadn't been in a cup car, bolted him in, and away he went. Yeah, you know, we saw the same thing out of Chase Elliott on the last run. He starts off really good. He can make some passes early on while these other cars are a little bit loose and take a little longer to get up to speed. That's exactly what's happening right now. Truex Jr. goes by him for third. Now here comes Eric Jones and Jimmy Johnson hunting him down. I tell you what, uh, I think the 42 has lost a little of his glit, a little bit of his performance too, because now that 22 of Joey Logano is there. We haven't seen that this whole race. Watch for Larson to start searching around. If he loses this lead to Logano, he will start searching around, try to make that top group come in. That's that's really his wheelhouse. He can run around the bottom. His car's been good down there, but he loves that top group. I, I saw this Saturday with him, though. He led the early part of the Xfinity race, but as the race won and the track changed, he didn't seem to be able to keep up with the track. Well, I don't know how you're going to keep up with this track today. Oh, well, no, it's, it's not. It it's changes impossible. about every five laps, doesn't it, DW? It's, it's just impossible. Some are just got a little bit more... Uh, insight than others and there he 33 goes. to go in stage one it was two years ago here at bristol that we stood up to cancer and saluted our colleague and great friend steve burns we lost him two years ago this weekend so let's reflect on the life of uh, a great colleague and a great friend steve burns as we crank it up
Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Racing presented by KFC is sponsored by Budweiser. Pursuing the American dream since 1876. This bud's for you. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. 173 laps, 49 of 125 in stage two. There's been a lot of excitement here at Bristol, but not at the front because Kyle Larson has put on a show. He's led every single lap. Yeah, and he's not letting up. Even on these slower cars, watch this move right here to the bottom. <laughs> that's, that's pretty risky at this point in this race, being the leader. But you know what? He's in a rhythm. This is a rhythm track. You get in that rhythm, you just want to keep it going. And that, that's what's going to put a lot of cars a lap down. The last time a driver led nearly this many opening laps at Bristol, August 2002, that was Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jeff Gordon ended up winning the race. Uh, along those lines, Mike, has anybody ever led all 500 laps? No. Turn two, Danica slapped the wall but kept going. Battle for eighth on the right side of your screen. And they won't today yes. either, DW. No, nope. <laughs> one time. One time. Oh, they <laughs> Only once. <laughs> Gil Yarbrough led all 500 laps here one year. Was he driving for Junior Johnson then? I yeah, would imagine I he, he was. was. Yes, sir. Junior's cars were always really good here. Here's something I, I just did not anticipate. Both of these cars, the two of Keselowski and the 18 of Kyle Busch, I really expected both of these cars to be up front battling. And they may when they make some more adjustments as this track changes. But the 18 of Kyle Busch, so strong in practice all weekend long. Now look at this battle. This is the joy up high, and that makes it three wide. Yeah. Stenhouse has to back out. I mean, like Stenhouse missed the bottom there a little bit, went up the racetrack, and there's no group, no grip once you get above that traction lane. I think we see Stenhouse three wide more than anybody out there. In the last three laps in turn two, drivers have got outside that upper groove and come close to the wall. It happened to Danica Patrick, and it just happened to Ty Dillon uh, when he was right next to our leader at turn two. I think this is. Uh, Project of those marbles that Chris talked about. Yeah, there's you just got to be so careful. You jump right over it, and there's zero grip out there, just a lot of marbles. He's got that move down pat, though. That's the second <laughs> time he's done it. <laughs> he's got experience at it, doesn't he? I know what's going to happen. <laughs> a lot jam here. here. We go. We look at here, the 22's right up on the back bumper, the 42, because of traffic. Yeah. And I, I think Larson's car is starting to go away a I, little bit on that bottom groove. His car is much better on the top. Wow, and the, the car's about to be lap stayed up high. Now Larson. Here we go. Here is we he go. going for the bottom? We, yes, he is. Cut him, cut him off. Now watch how the 22 just closes right up on him through the center of the corner. It even stays with him on the exit. Well, I think what well, Larson's going to get caught in the lap car here. But Joey Logano, he doesn't want that 42 to get away. I think he's got him where he wants him if he can get around him. But Larson can't lap Matt Bidet. Uh, you no. Benedetto. Guido. Do we bet? <laughs> yeah. That guy. Di Benedetto. <laughs> well, you Goodness. know what? This is what kept De Benedetto in the game and in a top 10 position here a year ago. Here comes Truex to the bottom. Truex says, y'all going up there and work on a De Benedetto. I'm going to pass you both. Jamie. And I talked to Cole Kerr, the crew chief for the 78. He told me they set this car up more like they did for the fall so he can run the bottom. Now, he hasn't gone up the racetrack one bit. He really likes how the car is performing on the bottom. So you Now, see, I saw something out of Larson right there. He's a little more patient getting into turn one, got right down next to the apron and hooked that bottom, and, and he was able to get by to Benedetto. To Benedetto still battling, though. He got down yep. in front of the 22 of Logano. I give to Benedetto, I give him my dad a boy. He's, yes. trying, to, he's trying his darndest he's to stay with him. He's wheels off that thing. I think he's a really talented race car driver, and it shows at a place like this. You see De Benedetto go to the bottom. He sees he's coming up on a slower car as well. He's battling for positions and trying to get that uh, free pass if the caution comes out. 
Meanwhile, back here, the 78 is working every way he can to get around Joey Logano. I think he might figure you got to put the bumper to him to make it happen. Larson's definitely found a little something. He started uh, hooking that bottom down to one and two much better than he had been. What he's doing, he's diamond in the corner, Jeff. He's going in up high and then cutting it down. Benedetto still holding <laughs> his own. Oh, the Larson just third. about spun out. Bottom, dig the bottom, dig the bottom. He went into the corner. He got a little high and the back end snapped around. Sorry, guys, it just, I thought he was gone. Man, you think these drivers aren't on the edge and working hard? Why do you think Logano is so wanting to keep pressure on Larson right now? He figures he can force him into a mistake. Oh, I see exactly what happened. He did, Larson did exactly what we've seen Ty Dillon do. He expected the 43 to go down low. He went up high and just got a little bit too high and about lost it. That was a heck of a save. He's not going to give up the lead. I can tell you. They're going to have to take it away from him. Well, there's really not a protocol for lapped cars. You don't have to run the bottom or run the top. I guess what the leaders ask is hold your line. I think that's Be predictable. Right. Mike, and I, I tell you, a car that I think will get up there and maybe give Larson a fit is that 78 of uh, Mark Trex Jr. He just got around Joey Logano, and he's a little quicker, I believe, than Logano was. And to me, Mike, on that point, I, I think when you get to a place like Bristol, there's no real protocol holding your line. If you're a lap car trying to stay in the lead lap, you're battling for your own positions. You're going to fight. Yeah, it's going to frustrate those leaders, but you have that right to do it. But you know what? Some days that could be turned around on you. Here you're looking at the ninth place battle in what's been the longest green flag run today. Here's Chris Neville. Yeah, and boy, Richie Stenhouse Jr. having a good run here. The car just didn't have any grip that first run, but big changes after the second stop. Happy with this race car right now. The big thing they need to do right now is execute on pit lane. This team has been giving up way too many positions. That last stop, they gave up five spots. And 18, Kyle Busch just a couple positions back. He just has not been happy with that race car all day long. Just saying the front is plowing. It just won't turn. That 78 is there, guys. Martin Truex looking on that bottom. He's underneath of the Larson car. Can't quite pull off the pass, but he is well, there. He, his car has come on strong. Larson's going to have to go to the top to try to work that top. A pretty good drive off turn two on the top. Oh, I, I think that uh, Martin Truex has got him. I think he's got that bottom working now. And I think Larson's car is falling off a little bit. Larson's going to have to be real careful jumping that cushion down to one and two. Talking about the brake rotor glowing going into the corner. Yeah, you know, talk about switches, man. Turn on the blowers. Uh, sometimes you'll you'll turn those off early in a run, as we see another battle for this lead. You'll turn those blowers off to get more heat in the tires quicker at the beginning of a run than once you get some laps in. You turn those switches on should help cool those brakes. But but Jeff, we're seeing what the fans want to see here. We got cars running high. We got cars running low. Larson's holding off that high line and holding off Martin Trex. He's running the bottom and it come off the corner almost side by side. Yeah, I think what we might see here pretty soon <laughs> is what the fans really want to see. If Larson keeps fighting uh, the second place runner of there he Truex, goes. there he goes. There he goes. He's got him if he gets up in front of him. Ah! Great battle here, Larry. What are you seeing? Well, if the air pressure has built up in that 42 car's right front because of that heat, He's probably picked up a bad push. The car's not turning because of that air pressure in that right front. Yeah, well, I don't know about the right front, but there are a lot of cars in his way, and he picked the wrong lane. Martin Trex picked the right lane. Martin Trex, your new leader. The last time a driver led 200 laps here, he led them all. That was Cale Yarborough. New leader, Martin Truex Jr.
Kyle Busch, who finished 38th and 39th here last year, may have cut down a right front tire and then hit the wall in turn two. We're under caution. Pit roads open. Jamie. And Jimmy Johnson saying he was getting tighter as he ran up the track, but there at the end he was getting tight on the bottom as well. Chad Canals' his crew chief saying you're doing a great job, buddy, working on this car, making it better each stop. Meanwhile, the 78, really happy with this car, took the lead there on that last run. Four tire stop here, air pressure adjustment already. Next. It's teammate, the 78's teammate is that 77 up at the top of your screen, Eric Jones. Jones, like Truex, is pretty good, although Eric says, I'm a little tight off four. That's where I need the help, Matt. Joey Logano looking for his third Bristol win first in the spring. He says he just needs much more turn like he has fought the last two runs. Four tires stop. Meanwhile, the 42 of Larson, the pole sitter, he says he just lacks grip, mostly on exit of turn two. That's where he's losing the majority of his time. Truex wins the race off pit road from Logano and Larson. And here's why we're under caution. Kyle Busch loses a right front, goes into the wall in turn number two. During this caution flag, Ryan Blaney has gone behind the wall with the hood up. Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Racing presented by KFC is sponsored by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And by Ram Trucks, America's longest lasting pickups. 35 laps to go in stage two on the first ever Bristol race to start on a Monday. And uh, Larry, let's take a look at today's Liberty Mutual Insurance Worry Less Strategy. Well, Mike, so far, the way the cautions have been falling, I've not been leaving you out there. I've been coming getting four fresh tires. But if we stay out on the caution on hot tires, you have to do what you see these drivers doing. You're trying your best to keep those tire rubber marbles off the tire because if you don't keep those tires cleaned off, you go back to restart. Jeff, it's Katie bar the door for a lap or two. Oh man, that would not be much fun if you've got all that debris on those tires and you've got to push the car as hard as you do on these restarts to maintain position or make up positions. That was ugly. Ooh. We're gonna go, we're going to go green this time and I believe we've set a new NASCAR record. We've had three caution flags and one driver, Ty Dillon, has got the free pass in every one of those. You see we're continuing there on the Wood Brothers car, and because that is a mechanical problem, he is not subject to the five-minute crash clock. 
They'll try to get that power steering fixed and get Ryan Blaney back out there. Mike, that did look like a bead on the 18 car. Uh, looking at that tire they were uh, looking at in the pits over there. I agree, DW. I think that was heat related. Uh, that was a grueling pace they were running right there, and his car was pretty tight. Green flag. Hey, a car that's uh, in a team has done a really nice job of managing this race, and that's that 48 team. They, oh, 88 in the wall. Never made it. Caution's out. Wow, he hit that hard. Let's uh, listen in on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s radio. He was running 20th. We are smoking. Why? We just uh, noticed when you left, there's a little oil in the pit stall. Yeah. Now that was before, huh. just before the restart, was that radio. They had to put some oil on that front tire, yep. and he just lost the front going into turn one. Yeah, it, it, it just goes up straight up the track. Yeah, he's already in the wall. It had to be related to that. That's pretty odd. There's no, no real chance of that being a tire issue no. just on the restart. Well, I, I, he went straight, so I, whatever it was, yeah. it, you yeah, right. see right there. That's, yeah, that's definitely fluid underneath the right front, if I had to guess. Oh, that's a shame. Junior finished second here last year. Here he is right here, so let's watch him get off in the corner here. I think you can see the smoke. You see the, the smoke car. starts to boil out of the back, and the car just goes straight. Yeah. Yeah, no chance of making that first turn. No. Oh, he's leaving a snail's trail of some fluid as he leaves his pit, and I assume it hits the garage. Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Racing presented by KFC is sponsored by Ford. We go further so you can. By Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less. And by Hemp C. Hope. Under caution at Bristol, Dale Earnhardt Jr. snake bit on short tracks this year at Martinsville in an accordion type crash. He ran into a car, busted the radiator, and was out of the race here. 
they have lost the oil cooler and uh, the mechanical damage they can repair behind the pit wall as long as they don't work on any damaged bodywork. But they could try to repair it mechanically, get them back out there. But here's a look at the 88. Yeah, and, uh, you would think by busting the oil cooler or in, and it's in the radiator area that he would have knocked something would have hit that to to uh, puncture it. But I don't know, DW. I, don't I think this this place takes a beating. That concrete racetrack. The, the, the amount of force as well as the vibrations. But you're putting these parts and pieces and things through a lot. I'm just wondering if possibly something cracked or broke um, you know, that that oil line was attached to. Yeah, could it could have. And uh, we're told he is out of the race. They have retired the car with mechanical damage. Making his way toward the care center. This, this, this joint will bring Iron Man to his to his knees. So I know that car it takes a pounding just like the driver does. Let's do it now. Vince. Yeah, I'm with Junior now. I know Junior, they were trying to address w what damage was done before the incident and what damage was done after you hit the wall, but did you have any idea at all that there was a problem? We come out of pits and there's some oil in the pit stall. I noticed when I was getting lined up for double foul, it's smoking. I don't know why, uh, but it's got oil all over the, in the engine compartment. So we went in the corner and just went straight in the wall. But I don't know what's broke, but I think that's the end of the day. Per NASCAR rules, you have to go to the medical center. Do you feel okay? I feel good. We'll get in here and find out. <laughs> Mike. Thank you, Vince. That's only his third DNF ever for Bristol. The previous ones were all result of accidents. Now uh, let's look at some of the repair going on for Kyle Busch, Chris. Mike, Kyle Busch also snake bit here at Bristol the last year. He had a tile failure in the spring race last year, a suspension failure in the fall race, and a bead failure here today. And listening to his crew chief, Adam Stevens, he said, not quite sure why we had that bead failure. Temperature on the wheel was not extreme, but the team has taken a look at the suspension on that right front corner twice now, and everything looks good. Cleanup continues down in turn number one from Dale Earnhardt Jr., and we'll stay under caution. Race fans, every driver has a secret to winning, and for cookouts, there's Bush's secret family recipe for classic flavors and Bush's grill and beans when you're looking for something bolder. We're going to go green this time with Martin Truex Jr. on the outside of Jimmy Johnson on the front row. And as these cars continue to circulate under caution, as the rubber that's been shed from the tires cools, the race tires will pick it up. And look, so too do the tires on the track trucks that run around here pick up that rubber. Hey, those are cold tires. I was going to say, those hot tires are doing. If I'm Martin Tricks and I'm on the outside, I want to get some gone because I don't want anybody going in the corner underneath me. 
Watch the rubber just fly off these tires as they get going. Hard to be 22 to go in stage two and we're back under green. Well, that went a lot smoother than I anticipated. Right, we're, look, we're well, talking not down about to turn three though as they carried all that speed into turn three. They're all sliding up the racetrack. We are talking about trained professionals. Here, you know, <laughs> they, they know if we know it, they know it. You can hear the drivers that you never get a car wide open. You kind of play with that throttle. Give it gas, give it gas, give it gas. Short 650 foot straightaway. You very seldom get it wide open just for a short burst. Well, Denny Hamlin, Ricky Stenhouse, Chase Elliott, Brad Kozlowski, and Clint Boyer, and Paul Menard all trying to make that outside work. And so is Kyle Busch coming from the back with that damage. All lead lap cars. I think Kyle Busch's car is okay. It didn't look like it hit the wall bad enough to damage the car where he would be able to continue on, and I think he may be okay. I think what it's going to be on his mind is if we get another 90 lap run, you know, was there something in the setup or air pressure wise that maybe had contributed to that or the brakes? Oh, Larson gets loose in the three, makes contact with Hamlin. Larson's car is just, it, it's, it's just gone away. Uh, as good as it was in the beginning, it just has gone away. And that's not his fault. And it's not the car's fault. The track changes and you got to anticipate. That's what makes Jimmy Johnson and some of these guys running up front right now. It's what makes them great here. They anticipate what the thing's going to do and they and they're ready for it. So Larson making contact with Denny Hamlin as he tries to catch that car up. I think Larson got caught on the bottom on the restart. Your help. Like the car really just wasn't quite there for a few laps. It actually started coming back to him and he got inside of the 11 and moved him up the racetrack, but then Larson drove in a little too deep and got loose. About three laps ago, David Reagan got into the wall in two, but it was just casual contact. Jamie. And I talked to Wheels, Mike Wheeler, the crew chief for Denny Hamlin. He said, Denny is as happy as he's been all year long with this race car. Really liked how it handled on the bottom and up on the top in practice. Today it's been good, but as he runs, he just loses all turn as he gets tighter, as he battles for his first top five of the year. I don't think he liked Trevor no. Bain shoving him all the way through no. 234 on the left rear. He might be happy with his race car, but he's not happy with Trevor Bain, I can tell you that. Eric oh, Alvarola, got a problem. Got a who got the, the free pass on the last caution, he's got a lot of smoke. In fact, I think the cockpit's probably filled with smoke. Yes, yeah, it is. Sure it is. Now, is that something similar to what we saw happen with Dale Earnhardt Jr., or is that completely different? He's coming to the pit. Well, we only got 10 to go here in this, uh, this stage, guys. Battling for stage points as Mark Trix puts Danica Patrick two laps down. Logano and Johnson trying to close, and here's the big battle for stage points. Trevor Bain is ninth, the 24 Elliott is 10th, and Stenhouse wants a part of that. Chris. Mike Trevor Bain having a great run here in the top 10. He's liking his race car. He has said it's been a little bit tight on this last run, though. He said, I started backing up the corner. I'm using less brake. And guess what, guys? It's working. Yeah, if you do that, you can really free the car up and get it through the center really good. But the reason why you have to back up the entry is because if you free that car up, it's going to get really loose as it transitions into the corner. That's kind of the magic to this joint. You got to know how you just can't overdrive these corners. You charge in the corner, the car won't turn. You charge in the corner, the car gets loose. Back off a little early, get back on a little quicker. Now, Jamie, the 43 made a quick stop and go, and he's back out there. What happened? We weren't sure if it was a big issue or not, so we came down here. He had a tire rub left rear. He had contact with the 15 prior to that, and they got that tire off in record time. No harm, no foul on the 43. Great battle here for ninth and the final stage points. Elliott cannot clear <laughs> Trevor Bain, and now here comes Stenhouse, and first time we mentioned Matt Kenseth today. That's six and the 24 and the 17. I mean, they are battling hard for that 10th and final stage point. Look at Stenhouse get to the inside of Chase Elliott right there. You know, we saw this out of Trevor Bain earlier. He leaves that bottom groove open. He did this with Clint Boyer. It didn't make him too happy. He leaves that bottom open. Chase Elliott's able to get there. He just can't quite complete the pass. 
And I that's going to open the door for Stenhouse. I know one thing. I wouldn't cut down in front of Stenhouse because I saw what he did at Kyle Busch in Martinsville. He Bain. wants to get on. He wanted to stay on the left there. He wants a point here. Bain's got really good drive off the corner from the top. Now Elliott's got to go to the top to get past Stenhouse once again. Three laps to go in stage two. Three cars fighting for the final point. And here's a guy we haven't talked about all day. He's been so quiet. That's Matt Kenseth creeping into the picture. Just remember, Jeff, this is 500 laps. And uh, Matt Kenseth knows that better than most of these guys. Well, the Roush Fenway cars right now have those last two point positions. One to go for Martin Truex. And they'll wave the stage flag after the 10th place car crosses the line. And who will that be? It looks like Stenhouse right now. I tell you, I hope Stenhouse and Bain respect each other because we know they are, uh, had a little issue those teammates have. Here comes Kenseth to the back bumper of Stenhouse. He's not going to get there. Ninth and 10th. No, but he was two forwards. Kenseth certainly was trying. You know, think of the start of the season he's had. He wanted one of those stage points. Martin Truex gets his fifth stage win. He leads all drivers in that category. And we're halfway in Bristol. It's definitely been a lot more fun the last two seasons to, to do what we've done. But I think all those lessons and all those things I learned when I was struggling, when I was going through some bad seasons, gave me a lot of perspective and made me appreciate what I have going on now. Martin Truex, five stage wins. That leads the league. Let's see what happens here on pit stops. As they've got the sweepers working turn one and turn three, trying to get rid of those marbles. Truex will lead them on to pit road. Jamie. And Jimmy Johnson got that big win at Texas, punched his ticket to the playoffs, and then went and celebrated in Mexico. Well, they picked up right where they left off. Really happy with the car. Loose on the restart, and it just snugs up as they continue to run. You see the onboard up top of the four of Kevin Harvick. They're making an adjustment. They helped that front grip once better rear grip. The 78 Martin Truex so happy to win that stage. Never won a race here at Bristol. They're hoping to get that done today. A four-tire stop. Let's go to the front side and Vince. 
Well, Eric Jones bringing it to pit road, and this kid has done another great job again today, hanging around the top five, pitting from sixth place this time. Says the car's not too bad. They just burned up the tires. A slight air pressure adjustment, Matt. Look, Joey Logano, P2 on the pit road, says that his car, he needs it to be a little tighter. It's too free on entry and exit. He's tried brake bias and the track bar adjuster. It just accelerates his issue. Two tires for Denny Hamlin. We'll put him out front and Cole Witt is the only car one lap down. He will get the free pass on this uh, caution flag. The fifth one of the day. We say we talked to Martin Truex that stage winner. That'd be a good idea. Hey, Martin Truex Jr. It's DW. You got me, buddy. Hey, DW. What's happening? You are, man. You are. Uh, has the car gotten better, Martin, or has the track changed and it just suits your car now? Because you are awesome right now. Yeah, I think a little bit of both. I think we've made some small adjustments. I think uh, the track has changed a little bit. So the car's really good around the bottom right now. I'm pretty happy about that. So we'll just see what happens here. But uh, guys have all done a good job on our first road Toyota today and all weekend. And uh, see what we can do from here on out. All right, my friend. Well, Cole gave you a good car today, and uh, you're driving the wheels off of it. Good luck, buddy. Oh, I appreciate that. It's been a lot of fun so far. We'll see, see how it goes the rest of the day. Thanks, guys. Martin Truex, your stage winner. In fact, the first five finishers of stage two were all from different teams, led by this guy, Mayotte, New Jersey's Martin Truex. Let's have a look at how the Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring here at Bristol. Denny Hamlin with that two tire change, currently second to Landon Castle, who did not stop. Joey Logano right behind him. Ryan Newman, Austin Dillon, Daniel Suarez all still on the lead lap. Danica Patrick is the first and right now only car one lap down. Yeah, Mike, interesting strategy. The 11 took left side tires. And of course, the 34 of Castle, he didn't take any tires, so uh, this ought to be interesting. Well, wheels know something we don't know. <laughs> Landon Castle took the wave around in lap 217 and pitted seven laps later. He stayed out under this caution to put that little locomotive in the lead as he starts next to Denny Hamlin to the Geico restart zone, and here we go. Three wide. Look at Martin Truex Jr. with all that momentum on the outside with four tires. And keep an eye on Kevin Harvick. He's been creeping into this picture. He won the last time we were here at Bristol. 
really fast on that outside lane. And look at Larson also coming back up. Oh, yeah. Kyle Larson is back. Now that he's got tires, that's a brand new race car again. <laughs> yeah, I think they finally made some adjustments to that car to go with the track conditions. But he got off there for uh, that middle part of the run that last time by. He's going to take a look to the outside, get to the quarter panel, maybe of the Ford Harvick. He's there. Got to give him some room, buddy. See if he has the drive off that he needs. Yes. Well, he's not quite clear. Jamie. And remember when he won here in August, they're in a different manufacturer now with Ford. A lot of changes, a lot of differences. It's been a little bit tougher for them this weekend. But right now, rear grip is a little bit better, and they did that with air pressure on the last stop. He's Kevin Harvick in the four, currently second. Yeah, he was able to fend off that uh, challenge by the 42 car, which surprised me. I thought the 42 had the momentum on the outside, but Kevin got down on that bottom and dug right by him. I think we're at that stage of the race now where that outside groove is really good for about two laps. And you better make your moves early and quick and then get right back down to the bottom. Let's mention Ryan Blaney is back in the race after 47 laps behind the wall, repairing power steering. Chris Neville. Mike, just a couple laps ago, Jamie McGurry reported he's got tire smoke in the car. A lap later, he said, I think I have a tire going down. He's quiet on the radio now, but definitely some concern over there. Boy, the short tracks this year, not kind to Jamie McMurray. Well, remember, in Martinsville, he had a flat tire going, tried to ride it out, ended up in the wall. Don't see any smoke off the one car anywhere. He looks pretty clean. Now, does Trevor Bain have a similar issue? We listened in. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> odd that you would hear? Now, I just wonder if there just was some contact that was made on that last restart. These guys were really getting after it when that green flag came out, battling hard for position. Wonder if a little contact was made between the six car and somebody else as well as McMurray and somebody. I, I just, I think it's low air pressure. I think you go back to green here, you got low air pressure, you rub the fenders a little bit, they got to go away. Now let's go about half a lap behind the race leader to where Brad Keselowski languishes in 22nd place, Matt. Mike, we documented the Wood Brothers 21 power steering issue at the end of stage one. They replaced that. Now Brad Keselowski in the Team Penske number two says he's having some type of issue with his. The car is free and it's very difficult to turn the wheel back to the right to try to correct it. He is dropping and dropping fast. Mike, I just think sometime on these restarts, it's low air pressure. These teams keep dropping pressure, dropping pressure. Remember, you got inner liners in the right side tires. So it just puts a little strain on that steering box and that pump until the pressure's build up a little bit. Yeah, DW, you know, as these races go on, a lot of times these crew chiefs, you know, they'll start evaluating the situation, looking at tires, and they start getting a little bit more aggressive with their with what their adjustments are as well as air pressure. All right, Michael McDowell and Corey LaJoy were battling for position the 95 and the 83 and McDowell hooked him and LaJoy got a piece of the wall. Now that's going to be a tire rub with that right front if the 83 LaJoy is not careful. 13's up high over here in turn two also he got up in that loose stuff again. That's the third time we've seen him up there. Same song third verse. That's right. <laughs> he said. He's perfected it, I'll say that. Derek Cope comes to the pits. Oh, I thought he was going to pit. 19 laps down, limping around the apron as the leader goes past. Yeah, and he's been pulling away from Kevin Harvick. He wants to get as big of a gap as he can possibly get before he catches lap traffic because that's where the trouble spot's been. It's so hard to navigate through traffic. Speaking of issues, how about Kyle Busch, Chris? Boy, Mike, he's just had a tough day. We saw the problems with the right front on that car. Now he's reporting he thinks something might be broke in the back of the car. So, boy, just the same problems as back in 2016. Yeah, last year they, they had an issue, something with maybe the trailing arm mount or something broke in that car, put him in the wall when he was leading the race. I wonder if, uh, you know, he's feeling something or maybe he's just a little nervous, DW. You know, sometimes when you've had an issue in the past, with a broken uh, part, this place puts a big load on it. You get a little nervous. We, we had what we called a concrete car. We ran it here in Dover, and everything on that car was a little stronger than the cars that we ran anywhere else. We beefed up everything, track bar mounts, trailing arm mounts, sway bar mounts, anything that we could beef up a little bit, we did when we came here. Casey Kane, 19th, racing A.J. Allmendinger for a top 20 spot. 
25 cars on the lead lap with 220 to go. You know, Casey's another one of those. Who, he loves that high line here at Bristol. If it comes in, watch for him to move forward. And, and then A.J. Allmendinger, you know, he's just turned into a heck of a short track racer over the last couple of years. And uh, we've seen that at Martinsville, but we've also seen him perform really well here at Bristol. At second place, Larson has caught Kevin Harvick. I think they just made the right adjustments this time on the 42 car. He'd been falling back, but this time, Matt, they look good. How's he uh, How's he saying? What's he saying down there, buddy? Well, DW, it looked almost like shades of the Xfinity race on Saturday, where stage one was the best run for the 42. The car just kept going more and more free. That was what we were seeing. This run here, they made a big swing when he was off pit road with a chassis adjustment. He was losing all grip, entry to exit. It seems like the car has gotten better. Yeah, it's yeah, so that top groove. <laughs> Definitely, but well, you know why, Jeff? Now he's comfortable. The car is, he's got the car under him. He can go play around a little bit with that upper groove. Look at him diamond off the turn four. Gets a run on the four. The four goes to the bottom. Larson runs high, diamonds the top and gets a big run. He's able to get back in the throttle, really carry a lot of speed off the turn two to make that pass. Yeah, they've got that car under him now, and now he can play around with that upper groove. He was too loose to do that earlier, but now it's under him, he can do something. And you know, DW, what else? I'm seeing more cars run up high. I think they're starting to move that groove up, get some of those marbles pushed all the way up against the wall hey, to find that sweet spot. Truex, and that battle comes back because Corey LaJoy has caught Michael McDowell. They are four laps down now, but they are battling for position. LaJoy makes the pass without incident. And how has that right front hung in there on Corey LaJoy after that contact he made with that outside wall? I talked to Corey LaJoy at uh, Friday night. He said, what do I need to do, DW? And I said, run all the laps. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Just run all the laps. It's hard, to, it's hard to keep that aggression out of those young guys. They want, they want to go. Let's take a look under A.J. Allmendinger's car. Right uh, rear suspension cam. And, and Jeff, you were talking about this, and here's a perfectly good example of how rough and how violent and how much vibration goes into these cars. Just watch that right rear spring and that, that right rear corner of the car. Look at the deflection in the right rear sidewall of the tire. Look at that truck arm move up and down. I mean, all those vibrations. Yeah, the suspension's taking a lot of it, but your body is taking a lot of that force and that vibration as well. This place is tough on everything. And guys, his crew chief is ready to make an adjustment. What that is right there, that is what we call a spring rubber. They can shove that in that spring and increase the rate, or they can pull it out with that little pull strap right there, and that takes right away from the spring. Normally, if you're tight, you'll shove that rubber in. If you're loose on exit, you'll pull that rubber out. First green flag stop of the day, Brad Keselowski. I think he's got trouble, Mike. He, uh, yep. I don't know exactly what's going on with that two car, but maybe we can find out once he gets in the pit. Way too soon for a scheduled stop. Yeah, it is, and he, and he turned out. Uh, he was slow right in front of our leader, too. Uh, he was able to get around him, but it was close. That's what he was telling his team, how to lose wheel. They were telling him the car was free. They told him to try to work more on the track car to see if that would help. No positive gain on the two. So he rode it out till he was about to be lapped as we watched the fifth place battle. And Ty Dillon has had it with David Reagan. Gives him a bump and a thump and then a run. As we watch a great battle going on here for fifth place, sorry to distract yeah, no, you. Ty Dillon saw the leader coming behind him, and he was stuck in some, some traffic. He wanted to get by that traffic and get out ahead of that leader, try not to go another lap down or a lap down. Yeah, we were talking a little earlier in the race. What's wrong with the 11 car? Not running very good. Looks like they got it fixed. I believe this track went through a big change. Halfway through this race, the bottom is worn off. The top's coming in. Guys that have been able to adjust and take advantage of that are guys that are running good right now. Well, and something else I see, other than our leader, Martin Truex Jr., those that struggle a little bit at the beginning with a loose race car seem to really come on strong as the run uh, continues to go long. Things tighten up for second and for fifth. Coming up on 300 laps complete, we'll keep it right here for you.
Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn, making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR, inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. 307 laps complete. Brad Keselowski's pit stop was for a loose right rear wheel. Uh, they got four on there, and everything is fixed there. Uh, meanwhile, Daniel Suarez came in, had a long stop while they put four tires on his Toyota and had to clean out the grill opening on Suarez's car. He's back out, but now four laps down. Uh, Mike, when that uh, 34 car, when he leading the race when we went back to Green while ago? Yes, Daryl, but without benefit of new tires. And I just think also, though, that's the difference in the racetrack right now. With all that traction down low, you're able to run around the bottom. Fresh tires really mean a lot. If everybody was single file around the top, I think it'd be a lot harder to get by them. You'd almost have to do a slide job. So this is definitely going to uh, going to cost. Landon However, Kessler. hats off for Donnie Wingo oh, yeah, his crew no. chief because they had one and only one chance to lead this race, and this was it. It worked for them last year. Right. Now there, said last year. I know. Things oh, Keselowski slow is going into turn one. Yep. Down on the apron. I think there's a little bit more going on than just that set of tires. He's really slow. Now Paul Wolf is working here with Brad this weekend because uh, they lost their appeal on Wolf's suspension, but they've appealed. Okay, you're in the four. You're in the three. You're gonna pit this time. They've taken the final appeal step, so Wolf can be at the racetrack. The appeal will be heard on the 26th today. It's Paul Wolf's 40th birthday. Mike, and I, I don't know if it's a right rear tire or not. It could be, but remember, they had some suspension problems at the, what was it, Vegas, when he had to wait race one in his right front hub. I think gave out, so we find out from the map what they got going on, bud. Well, they are telling Brad Kislowski exactly where his teammates are waiting for him behind the wall. They asked him a couple different questions. He feels like he's got about two or three things possibly going here on the two car. So uh, possibly, possibly issues for the two. They're pointing at the right rear there, Matt. Something obviously is going on with that right rear. back and forth down the straightaway like they got a broken track bar and shake it real bad and I can't turn the wheel. So Kozlowski's string of six straight top six finishes comes to an end here. Now they are not on the crash clock because this is not crash damage. It's a mechanical problem. They can repair it and go back out. Again, Mike, and we talked about it, Jeff did vibration. This place, it'll break. The things that you've never broken before, you'll break at this racetrack. It's concrete. It's got those expansion joints. It'll pop, 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 pop all day long. That's why I love so much about that suspension camera that we have. It really shows the, the how violent it is, and you won't see that at any other track. Look at this battle for ninth place. Clint Boyer trying to hold back Ricky Stenhouse, Vince. Yeah, and it's been an eventful day for Boyer. They've just been trying to get some grip in the car, and that's been his main complaint. Hasn't been able to get track position, but how happy is Clint Boyer to be with this Stuart Haas group? His average finishing position is 17 spots better than last year at this time. So to be running in the top 10, once again, they're very pleased. He's had two top 10s the last three times we've been here, so it's obviously a track he likes. He's getting a pretty good run right now. Let's get back down behind pit wall to Brad Keselowski's car, Matt. Mike, you heard Brad Keselowski tell Paul Wolf possible several different things wrong with the two. Now over on the right rear, that wheel is loose again. Meanwhile, up under the hood, they were looking at changing the power steering pump here on the two. Roush Yates engine folks are over here. Remember, they had to do the same thing on the Wood Brothers 21. Backstretch, one car ran Danica. hard in the wall, and that is David Reagan. And Danica up here, Mike, in the 10 car as well. Some things just have a way of unfolding very predictably, and this was one of them. Sixth caution of the day. Lap 323. Let's see what happened here, guys. Uh, I think we know, but take a look. Danica on the bottom. Oh, David Reagan gets a big run, tries to go to the center, and make it three wide. Danica just didn't have any idea that he was going to do that. Comes up and makes contact. Yeah, he was trying to go by his uh, 34 car there. 
dove under him, and then it goes down below. Right here. 42, 19 and 11, stay easy, 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 back it down, back it down, back it down, stay in the middle, you clear all the way back up, clear all the way back up. Great that's, job. A, that's a really risky move to be making right there. I mean, on his I, teammate. I mean, I understand he had he had the run and, and you know, he's going to try to dive inside him going into turn three as they went down the back straightaway. But you have to anticipate and understand with that car on the inside what knowledge they have. And, and Danica had no idea that was going to come and happen. A lot of damage. Kyle Larson just barely squeezed through there. Yeah, remember, they stayed out the last time. Everybody had a lot of laps on their tires, so I think we'll see pit road very busy with four fresh tires. That move worked out for Denny Hamlin, the 11. They maintain good track position, Jamie. And they're all coming in. You see Kevin Harvick, his onboard camera, giving us a nice shot of the 48 of Jimmy Johnson coming in. And the four, Kevin Harvick saying that last adjustment, air pressure really helped the rear. He just wants the front to turn a little bit better and hang on longer. The 48, Jimmy Johnson, really happy with the car. You see a chassis adjustment with wedge right there. And the 78, happy all day long. Air pressure adjustment and four tire stop. Let's go to the front with Vince. Well, that 24, Chase Elliott came into this race second in points, been hanging around inside the top 10, likes the car on the bottom, but needs a little security up top. So they're going to give him a chassis adjustment and four tires, Matt. Logano is second, his car much more consistent this run. Meanwhile, the 42 of Larson, his car better, starts out free, especially on the bottom, and then starts to build tight. Service complete for Logano, great stop. Joey Logano winning the race off pit road. He will be the leader when we go back to green. Kyle Larson picks up a spot and Clint Boyer gets the first speeding penalty of the day too fast entering pit road. Danica Patrick David Reagan get together Patrick out of the race. Danica Patrick climbs out of her car disappointed after coming up the racetrack out of the corner as David Reagan dived to the middle of the racetrack. And Martin Truex's crew helping clean up a little there, but along with Patrick's, I, I assume that may have come from her car, not his. Landon Castle able to continue. So does Reagan. A little bit of damage to the right side. You know, Mike, we've already heard from Danica this year. She has not been having a lot of fun this season. That fun level just went down another notch. It did. Getting ready for the restart. Logano outside Truex. And Joey gets the jump with Kyle Larson. A little bit of a jukey restart, I might say. Ooh, I think I think Logano thought he ought to go up and block the 42. It's going to turn out all right. You see that big slide by Larson coming I off did. the turn four? He's trying hard to get this lead. He knows how important that this is. He lost that track position earlier, but he knows just how important it is. And, and, and Jeff, lead back. Joy Logano is kind of running it right where he thinks that the, the 42 wants to go. He's running up just a little bit to make it hard for him to go high or low. And, and, and Logano, you know, he's one of those cars. Oh, little 
wiggle by the 42. I don't know if that was a nudge from the 78 or not, but he got a little loose right there in the middle three and four. It's going to give an opportunity to the 78. That 78 can hook that bottom, man, I'll tell you. Woo. Yeah, the high side has good drive off, but nobody is hooking the bottom like Truex. Yeah, but nobody runs the top like Larson. <laughs> That's right. Boy, I tell you, there's some racing going on at 78 and 42. Got the 77 to 48. Here come the 11 and the 4 and the 5 in hot pursuit. Woo! And the Gama's up there loving this. Keep racing, boys. Jimmy Johnson all the way to the top in 1 and 2. And that gives him a drive off to get even with Jones in 3 and 4. Let's try it again. Boy, you can, you can really sail it in on the outside. Hesitate a little in the middle, but then get an incredible burst of speed off the corner. Hamlin drop, uh, rather, Johnson drops back in line fifth. Hamlin seventh, up and out of the groove. Casey Kane takes advantage. I mean, that's pretty impressive by Eric Jones. You'd never know this guy's a rookie. I mean, he looks like a veteran out there. I just think running that, <clears throat> that race on Saturday, and he won it. It's a great confidence booster. Plus, he learned so much about the track and the conditions. I think it really is paying off for him today. Newman and Hamlin side by side for ninth. I think Hamlin, Larry, I believe Hamlin ran better when he just had le new left sides because uh, he's falling back. Here yeah, I mean, left sides seem to be better for him, Larry, instead of four tires. Yeah, th those. Just changing lefts will definitely change the handling characteristics of a car more so than changing just rights. Meanwhile, the lead tightens up, Matt. And Mike, Joey Logano told his spotter, Tab Boyd, under that caution, for the first five or six laps after the green, keep me more abreast of what lane the cars behind me are running so I can try to time my move. After that, this falls on spotter Tab Boyd because of the momentum from the guy running the top to where Lobano's on the bottom trying to catch each other on exit. A lot going on in the spotter stand. There's a lot going on everywhere right now, <laughs> Matt. I mean, the 6 and the 11, they got a heck of a battle going on here for position. I don't know who's going to prevail in that situation, but, man, they've been getting mighty close to each other. I do think Lagan or uh, Ham, oh, he gets loose. Kind of jump the cushion. That top groove just not quite ready, and that's where Hamlin was really good on that last run. When that top came in, he was super strong. Just going to take him a little while. He's going to lose some positions here. Maybe he can get it working in, in here in a few laps. I think Bain. I think Bain has maybe helped that a little bit too, because he was racing Hamlin really hard. Hamlin on the outside. Hamlin drove in a little hard. Bain got the spot. Here's another guy. I mean, think about this. Uh, Kyle Busch. You know, we thought he had some problems. We didn't know what his situation was, and here he is. He's fighting hard to get by Bain right now for top for a top ten. Yeah, look at that car cut right under him. Kyle Busch just cuts right to the bottom to get the inside of Trevor Bain. I think he might complete complete this pass. How about it, Chris? Yeah, boy, Jeff. Pretty surprised to see Kyle Busch working his way, getting close to getting back into that top ten right now. Egg just popped into the top ten. He uh, thought he had a problem, something breaking in the rear end of that back of uh, that car. But he's been quiet about that ever since. Still saying the car just a little bit too tight, just not coming in the way he was hoping. And it has really cooled down in the last half an hour. Lots of drivers talking about how that is affecting their race cars. When Kyle Busch is fighting hard, they've pitted five times uh, since bumping the wall to make repairs back at lap 210. Mike, what makes a car cut is camber. What causes tire problems is camber. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were a fan of temperature, Daryl. <laughs> well, that was if it was a bead. Yeah. If it's a shoulder, no. it's camber. Camber. I'm just saying. Jeff said he was cutting really good. I thought maybe too good. All right, 152 laps to go in Bristol. Joey Logano in front of Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Larson. Yeah.
148 laps to go in Bristol. Joey Logano leading. Let's take a look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Well, Mike, we've got you know our leader Joey Logano and and uh, Truex running first and second, but I'm going with the 77 of Eric Jones. I've been so impressed. This guy looks like a veteran out there. He's beat those veterans by winning Xfinity races here. I think he might get his first win right here, at Bristol today. Yeah, Jeff, we not talked much about Jimmy Johnson today, but he looks like he has good long run speed. In fact, on Saturday, he made almost an 80 lap run. Jimmy Johnson, DW, could get his second win here at Bristol. Look, I, I know Martin Truex has never won a short track race in 67 tries, but today that goose egg becomes a number one. Did I mention Joey Logano's leading? He's won two of the last five races here, so he would also be one to watch. And I think it's going to be tough to beat them, Mike. I will say because of how good they are on pit road, they're so consistent on pit road. They got a nice pit stall. He's got the lead. He's running really good. He's working around. And, and, he, and Logano's so good at working different lines and making good adjustments, as well as Todd Gordon. I just think that's a, a, a great combination. Uh, but boy, what a tight battle we've got. Second, third, fourth. Hold on. Did anybody take Larson? <laughs> no. Nobody did. Man. Surprising. Because uh, he's working that top that might come in. I, I surely would not count that young man out. I mean, he just uh, he has a he loves this track and he loves running high. And I think that high line is starting to really come in well for a lot of these guys. Hundred forty one to go Logano's lead negligible call it one car length. Let's take a look at how Joey spotter helped him worry less with Liberty Mutual Insurance spotter coverage. Like he's even a little bit lower in into the center of three. Like he's turning in really early guard that entry so good by one. He's still keeping that very low entry stay the same all the way through. Keeping an eye on the competition and where they're running. That's how Tab Boyd helps Joey Logano worry less. Mike, I tell you, and, and Jeff, uh, the cars, more and car cars are getting to the top lane, starting to use that top line. It's really starting to work well. Logano's moved up. Even oh, Truex. Even Truex just moved up right there. And I, I'm pretty sure his spotter probably told him, hey, keep it on that 42. He's starting to work that high line. We saw this earlier where the bottom in one and two was working good, the top in three and four. Larson was doing that. Now Larson's taking the top in both lane or both ends of the racetrack. If that top comes in, that 42 car will be the guy to beat because he loves riding that wall. Man, did not take him long to make that pass for second place. He just he just drives in so hard and he's back in a throttle and accelerates so hard up off the corner. He has got but, it hooked up right but now. now. He's stuck behind the lap card. De Benedetto. I, and just watched the Stenhouse had an issue coming off of turn four. The lap before that went down into one and two and completely got out of the groove and sideways up in the marbles and in the wall a little bit. What a shame because he's running 10th and running very well. He and Bain both. You see him come into picture here. Okay, so he runs the bottom here. He must get a little bit loose. Oh, oh he got real tight. Just touched the wall. Now he's going to try to make up for it. Goes way high at one and two and just gets into the marbles. Got back in against too fast. Chris? Mike just was in the team on the 17. Ricky Stan has a crew telling him everything looks okay with that right rear, so keep going after it. I know. One thing I can tell you about Stenhouse and Bain today, they are driving as aggressively as anybody on this racetrack. They've taken no prisoners. I don't know if Stenhouse needs any encouragement to keep getting after it. Man, he's always getting after it. I think Stenhouse and Bain both are just excited. they got pretty good cars now. This year, the cars are much better. They're getting some better results. I think they're a couple of young guys with a lot of talent. They just needed good cars. Kyle Larson led the first 202 laps of this race, second most ever. Truex in third, Eric Jones fourth. The Furniture Road teammates running 3-4, both having a great day and figure to be in the outcome of this one. So does Jimmy Johnson, who's fifth, dropped back as far as 19th, and then once they found the handle, charged toward the front. Kevin Harvick, sixth. And Casey Kane. This may be the highest Kane has run all day. 
He started ninth, fell back toward the outside of the top 20, comes back up for seventh. And Kyle Busch, five pit stops after he bounced off the wall, but they've kept digging, and he's in eighth place. We thought during practice Phoenix winner Ryan Newman would have a good day here at Bristol. Car looked to handle well and he had good speed up off the corner. Right now he's got a mirror full of Ricky Stenhouse. And that's your top 10. And it's a good one too. I mean everybody's car looks pretty darn good right now. Most of the guys have kind of worked their way to the top of the racetrack and that seems to be working fine. I've never seen the conditions change so much during a race anywhere as I've seen today. A lot of credit goes to this racetrack for putting that traction uh, compound down in the bottom groove because that's what's continued to make these conditions change so much. Yeah, the grip strip's worn off quite a bit. You saw the pass there for 11th. Matt Kenseth in the 20, getting past Trevor Bain. Here comes Kenseth's teammate, Denny Hamlin, in 13th. And then A.J. Allmendinger, he's had quite a battle these last 10 laps with Chase Elliott and Jamie McMurray. Elliott now 15th. I don't know, uh, Chase Elliott was up in the top five for a good portion of this race and has just steadily been dropping back as these conditions have been changing. They maybe have had a, a little bit of a tough time keeping up with the conditions on the setup. McMurray now 16th, 11 seconds back of the lead. Clint Boyer trying to close on him. Boyer in 17th place. And Austin Dillon, 18th. Those are your lead lap cars. This was a lap and a half ago. Ooh, right against the edge. Yeah, Ooh, that's pretty heavy contact. It's not uh, the first time he's done that this weekend. No. Ah, that's <laughs> nothing for him. And, and, you know, he's just, he's trying to continue to creep that groove up. There's a little bit of free speed there. If you could go in a little bit higher and then hook that middle, carry good speed through the center. Centers are caved in, right rear of the worst, but no smoke. Just right, that sounds like a Bristol car to me. <laughs> <laughs> Keep digging, brother. Good third place battle here. Whoa, that was threading the needle for Jimmy yep. Johnson. Coming across the nose of Kevin Harvick. Two Toyotas, a Chevy, and a Ford. <laughs> Nobody all battling for third. Nobody's threading the needle right now like that 42 is. I mean, he is riding that wall. Joey Logano has led a total of 58 laps. There's 119 to go in Bristol. We'll keep it right here for you.
We are under caution. Here's Vince. Boy, how it good is it to hear when you're the crew chief of the 77 of Eric Jones when he says it's good everywhere. Four tires, no changes, Matt. Legato needs more turn, but he can't be any more free in. Air pressure change. Meanwhile, Larson says his car much better up top, and he's giving up more of the bottom. Air pressure change on the 42. Truex picks up a spot, as does Jimmy Johnson. Let's show you why we're under caution. This is the second time for Kyle Busch today. He was seventh. Watch this. Here he is right here coming in, into view. Watch this. When this thing blows, watch it blow part of that hood off. Oh, man. That's just that's a piece of the tire coming up there and popping that yep. flap. He's got five wins here, but in the last five races, he's had mechanical problems knock him out of four of them. Yeah, unfortunately, he's seen that outside wall in the middle of the corner far too much lately here at Bristol. The last time he won here, 2011. And none of his own doing. You know, it's all uh, been either right fronts or suspension issues. So they are out of the race, joining Chris Buescher, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Danica Patrick. Brad Keselowski's back in the race, 67 laps down. After repairing his woes, Ryan Blaney, 48 laps down. And the speeding police are out again, kind of like they are down the road in Piney Flats. This time it's Matt Kenseth and Ryan Newman who get nabbed. And Jeff Mike normally doesn't mention things like that unless he knows. <laughs> I was going to say, well, I, I saw what he No, 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 not me. <laughs> but you know, a couple of years ago, uh, they did a, a thing in the paper because it's photo radar in Piney Flats. And they said, all, the, all these cars that got stopped were from California. I didn't know we had so many California race fans come to Bristol. Well, they were all Toyota loaner cars to the teams oh, yeah. that happened to be registered in California. This track could have been in Piney Flats. The first <laughs> site that they thought about putting this track. That's right. Saturday on Fox, it's the chase for the championship in Supercross. Can Ryan Dungey do it? From East Rutherford, New Jersey, 430 Eastern Time on Fox. Monster Energy Supercross. Well, he's going to have to go through Eli Tomac because that kid is on fire right now. Kyle Busch out of the race. Now, we listened in on Eric Jones during this caution. Yes, I'm not understanding how my corner lights work because I'm getting destroyed down there. I don't know. I'm going all the way to double red marks and they're just pulling away. Yeah, so what that is, we talk about the dash, the digital dash and the lights and, and running certain lights. Well, here at Bristol, you can really accelerate through the corner because of the way those sections are lined up and it's a, a little bit wider line. So you run more, uh, you know, a couple hundred RPMs or 400 RPMs more through the corner and others are, are accelerating more than he is and he just feels like he's losing a lot of time down there. Paul Menard gets the free pass on this caution. As we watch Ryan Newman and Matt Kenseth drop to the back to serve that speeding penalty, tail end, longest line. Joey Logano gets the jump. And wow. so does Jimmy Johnson and Larson. Casey Kane. Larson didn't get up to speed. He just did not go. I don't know if he spun his tires or just what happened there. Uh, Logano didn't get off in turn two. He's going to open the door for Jimmy Johnson. Did you say Jimmy Johnson? <laughs> yes, I did. Jimmy Johnson is fighting for the lead? Wow. At Bristol. <laughs> It's funny how he just rides around, or not, not riding around, obviously, but no. we don't talk much about him, and here we are with 100 laps to go right at it, and uh, man, Jimmy Johnson. Larry, I know you talked about picking Casey Kane today. You know, show good speed in practice, but didn't show any speed until you guys have been documenting. This track has went through a substantial change. Boy, Logano's really having some trouble getting off of turn two. Every time they get over there, he seems to lose some speed up to get out of the throttle, opening the door for Jimmy Whoa, Johnson contact. as he leans on Logano. Wow. That was uh, almost disaster. Oh, he's going to complete this pass. Yeah, I guess Logano said, whoa, wait a minute, son. Don't wreck his boat. Yeah, yeah we we've, still got a, <laughs> we've still got 107 laps to race. I don't know. Those 107 laps go by fast here, and you don't ever want to give Jimmy Johnson the lead. Four laps a minute. Don't take long. Let's ride with Kyle Larson, see if we can pick up anything that might have happened on that restart to put him back in fifth place now. Get ready. 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 Green, green, green. Outside. 
Well, you heard a lot of wheel spin lot of, there, wheel spin. and it looked like Logano really brought him down slow and accelerated fast. And when when Larson tried to accelerate, as he's making a move to the outside of Casey Kane, a little bump from behind from Larson. A lot of wheel spin as he jumped in the throttle. That restart. wow, three wide, and he makes it work. That Larson, he can go around that outside. I think Kane gave him a bit of a gift right there. I think he could have taken that lane away, but he realizes how bad Larson wants to get back to the front right now. That kid can make that outside. I mean, he zings that thing around the corner. He just commits, doesn't he? He does. He's completely committed up there. He's got that hero or zero attitude, doesn't <laughs> oh, he? That's what I said. A lot of talent and no fear nope. whatsoever. It's fun to, I, I tell you, he's fun to watch. I mean, when we were in practice, he's out there riding the high line when nobody didn't get close to it. Harvick also on the outside. Larson started this race off leading 202 laps, the most laps that a Chip Ganassi car has ever led in a cup race. Well, I think he's changing the stats for Chip Ganassi <laughs> racing <laughs> every, every weekend. I agree. Come to here, points leader, start on the pole. For 11th place, Almondinger McMurray with AJ topside. You know, that's a benefit to having a teammate as we watch Jamie McMurray here. They can get the notes of what Larson's been going through, what his comments have been, what kind of uh, adjustments they've been making on that car. And it looks like maybe they've improved with McMurray a little bit. I, I don't know. If they said, what kind of setup's that 42 car running? I don't want no part of that. Are <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you going to drive it like that? Because like mm -hmm. nobody drives it quite like Larson, do they? I, well, I, so. I think that's a big part of it, but I think right now, we're seeing as close to a two groove equal racetrack as we've seen for quite a while here in Bristol. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and this is early in this run, Mike. You know, the last run, it took a while for that outside group. If the group's coming in this early, watch for it to only improve as this race gets down to the end. Third place. Make that second, third, and fourth place. As Larson clears Denny Hamlin, just ahead is Joey Logano. Now Hamlin is our top Toyota performer in fourth. Truex fifth, Eric Jones in eighth. And you can see what a smart race car driver Logano is there on the screen. Moves up to block that outside lane. Whoa, Larson got too high. Boy, he did an excellent job staying out of the wall right there. If you just look at our front runners right here, Jimmy Johnson, our leader, Joey Logano. Here comes Larson, the kid. Here comes the... Uh, the 11 car of Denny Hamlin, not four behind 78 Martin Truex, and here comes the four of uh, Kevin Harvick. Bunch of experienced drivers at the front right now. Jamie. It's been a solid weekend for Jimmy Johnson. You guys remember back to final practice on Saturday. He did a 77 lap run. He was so confident in the car, and the times really didn't fall off. So far today, the best part for Jimmy Johnson is the way he's gotten through traffic. The car has been good. Last stop, air pressure adjustment, and now he's there's some tough racing going on right now. The 47 and the 6 just made contact. Trevor Bain having a great run, but uh, I think A.J. Allmendinger said, hey, buddy, don't cut up in front of me. A lot of ways to make passes here, right, D.W.? And this Hello. is one of them. Hello. Hello. Well, Bain was 10th, and top 10s are, have been few and far between for Roush Fenway Racing. Thought he had a good chance to get one today, and oh, may me. yet. Logano coming back on the bottom. Oh, he's going to make this happen, I believe. Oh, Jimmy ooh, Johnson makes contact ooh. with the lap car. That was, that was close. And it's a three-horse race again. Man. Logano, Johnson, Larson. Larson. Oh, Logano had to shut the door on Larson, but I don't think it's going to work. He's got that outside groove. He thought about and it. And the momentum. Jeff, he thought about it. He started to get in there, and he said, no, 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 better not do that. Shut the door on that boy. He'll just kick it open. Mm, I'm afraid he will. Boy, Jimmy did a great job of moving up top, but he just hasn't quite got it figured out. Takes a couple laps for your car to come in and figure out that outside lane. He is sliding the car into the corner, trying to hold oh, on to oh, it. Wow. Oh, that was almost another bad move. <laughs> but a late, late change by Johnson trying to get around the 33. I just don't think his car's as good up top. He doesn't nope. like it quite as much as Larson does. He's being a little bit cautious up there. And Jeffrey Earnhardt 
gave way, dropped to the bottom of it. The four leaders pass. Now it's a four horse race. Oh, Larson oh, jumped over the edge, got in the marbles, lost some momentum. He, does, he just does that. He'll get five or six good laps and he'll get up a little too high, lose a little ground and gain it all back. And suddenly Logano and Truex are right there. Hamlin and Harvick not far behind them. But what I like about Larson, even when something like that happens, he doesn't say, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. He just goes <laughs> right back to it. He likes to live on the edge. Man, look how much faster he is than our leader, Jimmy Johnson, off of turn two. He's being pretty patient right now because he is faster. And you know, Johnson spotter Earl Barbin is telling him right where Larson wants to run and has been running well, and that's the groove that Jimmy Johnson has taken up. Ooh, ooh, Jimmy got up too high there for a second. Yeah, but Lar Larson's not even going to think about going to the bottom. Well, the only way you're going to pass a guy up top right now, I believe, is either lap traffic or making a slide job. And well, that's pretty risky. It's backing everybody up. Jimmy Johnson's kind of backing everybody up because here comes the 78, the 11, and the 4 just closing in. And that's a lot of risk to take with still 82 laps to go. Three on the high side, Truex on the bottom, four cars, all but under a blanket here at Bristol. I mean, Mike, how could you not love this? I mean, these guys are racing their hearts out right now and going as hard as they can go. We're inside 100 laps to go here. They know it's all on the line. Did I mention how awesome Bristol is? This is awesome. Baby. 77, Eric 77 Jones. in the wall. Got in the wall in turn three. Dang. And caution is out. Eighth caution flag of the day. Right side Jones was in eighth place. Got a lot of damage. To both sides. Right side's flat. Uh-oh. Got a little damage here on the 47. Hmm. Almondinger. It's a little more than a little. I'd say when two cars have damage, <laughs> they probably had some contact. Well, let's see from all the diggers viewpoint. Oh, ooh, ooh. I think I think that the 77 of Eric Jones made contact with a, uh, another car, cut his right front down, and, and he, he had a flat right front tire going oh, yeah. into one. Definitely had a flat. Yeah, he and the 23 got together, and that right front went flat. Boy, and AJ's close. Almost made it. Pit road is open. Lots of takers. Oh, fast and furious. Jamie. And Jimmy Johnson listening to him on the radio. He is out of breath. He was working that car. You see the wrench in the rear windshield. A wedge adjustment for the 48 air pressure in a four tire stop. The 11 at Denny Hamlin. He has been solid today. Another four tire stop as well in the 78. Four tires. He hasn't made an adjustment all day. Just air pressure. Matt. And look at those guys up on the wall waiting for the 22 to come down pit road. Telling his team that the car just takes off awful. He's on the splitter. The car washes up the racetrack. Air pressure change on the 22. Meanwhile, the 42 much better this run. No adjustments for Larson. Let's see who wins the battle off pit road. Hey, Larry, when was that 11 car the best? Two left side tires, and that's what he did right there. They, they had 30 laps on their tires, but with this stop here, Everybody only has one set of good years left in the pits. And for the fourth time today, Ty Dillon gets the free pass. Denny Hamlin, new leader.
Almendinger is going to have to come in for more repairs. Eric Jones under repair and steaming about it. And big news for Kyle Larson. He has pit stall number one. And watch, you will see him fire straight out. Instead of pulling out into the lane, he goes straight out to the end of pit road timing line. The problem is he got caught speeding in this last 50 lap segment that is pie shaped. And it's time over distance. The distance out here is much greater than the distance on the path that he traveled. It's the first speeding penalty for Larson this year. I'm pretty sure that the team has told him there's no way you can launch and speed off pit road. And he, I think he's as shocked as anybody yeah. about that. I think you're right, Jeff. So he will have to start at the tail end of the longest line. Oh, uh, this ought to be it. This ought to be exciting. And he's but in 20th place now. Keep an eye on him. Oh boy, it's going to be fun to watch. It'll be 73 laps to go. Your leader, Denny Hamlin, took just two tires. Two lefts again, two I lefts believe, side. too. Yeah, like no, he did the last time. It worked well last time. He'll have to battle Martin Truex, Joey Logano. And Hamlin takes off. Trying to get Joe Gibbs his first victory of the year. Johnson jumps up in front of Logano. We heard Logano talk about being on the splitter at the start of these runs. He got pretty loose getting into turn three. And that's what that looked like, Jeff, like the car is bouncing not off that splitter and picking the front wheels up just ever so slightly. And I think that's one of his issues coming off the of turn two as well. We've seen him give up some time and even you know open up the door for some others off of turn two. And that's what happens a lot of times. The air pressures are a little bit low at the start on these runs. And what that does allows the splitter, you know, and the whole car to get down closer to the racetrack. And if they get too low, get on that splitter. And it really takes the car out of the racetrack. Big battle for fifth place right here from Casey Kane on back. Casey Kane, boy, what a great run they've had today. Good to see him running up front if he can close the deal. Now Eric Jones after that crash made it back into the race. Now A.J. Allmendinger trying to return. Pass for the lead. Jimmy just went straight to the top here early in this run. Hamlin's down the bottom and he's able to get a lot of momentum off the corner. Oh, but did he jump the cushion a little bit? Yeah, he did. He had to check up right there. He's going to have to try again. Jimmy Johnson just ran his fastest lap of the race. I think, Everyone else did that in the first 10 laps of the race. Yeah, I think that's track conditions. The weather's cooled down a little bit. We heard him talking about it. it's a little cool, and it was. And now it's it's go. It's it's let her go, buddy. Yeah, the intensity level is picked up, and so has the pace. In the meantime, while they're up there racing each other, here comes Martin Truex back in the picture as well, and we know he's fast. Boy, three weeks ago. Wasn't everybody wondering, will Jimmy Johnson ever win? Now it's, will Jimmy Johnson ever stop winning? <laughs> yeah, what kind of streak is he going to go on now? Well, they're, they're just that kind of team. We know how great they are. Get them a little momentum, a little confidence builder, and this is what you get. Let's go back to the sixth place battle. Casey Kane, Clint Boyer, Vince. Well, what a good run it's been for Boyer. Remember, he's recovered from a speeding penalty past the halfway mark in this race. The one thing they love about Clint Boyer, he never quits. They set their goal at the beginning of the season for top 12 finishes. They've already adjusted it to somewhere between 8th to 10th. They might have to adjust it again. He's running 7. Neville? James Casey Kane doing a lot of what we've seen this year, running really well the second half of the race. He's only scored one stage point all season, but the second half, he usually comes alive. Casey Kane right now saying his car, very happy with it, but just a little tight in the center. Meanwhile, Kyle Larson restarted 29th in line. He uh, has just made the pass on Ty Dillon, and he's trying to get 15th place away from Ricky Stenhouse. What's but impressive? he's half a lap or more behind the leader. I was going to say, though, Mike, that's what's kind of impressive. Our leader's coming off turn two over there now, and he's going into turn one right here. So he's really maintaining track position pretty good, considering he's in all that traffic. Sixty laps to go this time by Jimmy Johnson leading Martin Truex by four tenths of a second. And Kyle Larson trying to rebound from 16th.
for the lead. Martin Truex keeps working the bottom. He's going to try to use Kurt Busch as a pick and pin Jimmy Johnson up there. Whoa, he got a little loose. 78 down on the bottom. Couldn't Cost do it. Cost him a little momentum. We'll see where the 41 goes. Man, what a battle this is. 78 can really use that shorter line with all the grip getting to the center. He just can't complete the throttle and complete the pass. Jimmy Johnson carries that momentum off the corner, yeah, off the top. Yeah, 48 keeps us, that keeps Martin Truex pinned down just enough, and he can't get past him. While we were away, Casey Kane made a stop, lost two laps with a four-tire change under green. I haven't seen if 78 or Truex be very good around the top, but, man, he is awesome on the bottom. Jimmy seems to decide I got to run the top and I'm going to make that work. And I, you know, I think for Truex, he's just got to stay in the game here, just stalk him, you know, find out where Jimmy, you know, maybe has some weaknesses and then use one of those picks and lap traffic. Kyle Larson, talk about traffic. He's been beating on Ryan Newman trying to get by. This is for 13th place. And he's running out of time, 46 laps to go. Let me tell you, you mess with him, you know what I was saying? You mess with the bull, you get the horns. <laughs> I wouldn't be messing with, with Ryan Newman very much. I think Ryan Newman said, all right, I know you're a lot better than me up there, and you've been pounding on my rear bumper. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Show me the way. <laughs> Casey Kane may have had a loose wheel. Uh, they're looking at the wheels that came off, and we've been watching this great third-place battle because Bumper to bumper have been Logano and Harvick for the last eight or nine laps. And I just love seeing two crews work like this. It just creates some really unique battles and they get side by side and get up next to them, force them to make a mistake. It's a lot of fun to watch. I think Jimmy takes, he gets a little gap between he and Martin Tricks, takes a little breather, you know, catches his breath. And here comes Truex charging right back. Well, I think Jimmy's got to be a little careful in that outside groove. We've seen where others have gotten up there and jumped over that edge and gotten into the wall or up into the marbles. And so I think Jimmy's just making sure he makes really nice, consistent laps, gets in a rhythm. I think the lap trap is going to make the difference here because Jimmy is committed to the high, to the high line. Truex seemed to be able to do pretty good on top or bottom. Let's see what happens. We've got a lot of side-by-side -side battles. Matt Kenson just passed uh, Clint Boyer. And Kyle Larson was right up on the bumper of Austin Dillon trying to take over 12th place when this happened. Oh, yeah, you see Larson. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, oh you... trouble right here. Turn four. Casey Kane, Daryl slowed way up, and Paul Menard had to spin, had nowhere to go. Just wonder if we don't have some kind of a loose wheel situation on the five car. He'd come down under that green. Menard was in ninth place, had a, had a very good run going. Let's see what happens here. Here's Menard right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe he oh, got yeah. the Kane wall. Is, uh, yeah, I see that. I wonder if he had an issue and slowed down that much, or he just got in the wall and slowed up that much. But either way, Paul Menard had nowhere to go. You're carrying so much speed momentum here coming into the corner. Let's see what happens. One in the wall here, stay low, check out, check out, wreckage, wreckage, wreckage. Come back up, you're all right, top clear, you hold up. Ninth caution of the day, including the two stage ending cautions. What, uh, Larry, what do you want to do here? My pen and calculator are smoking over. <laughs> Biggest factor, they only have one set of fresh tires left in the pits. We've run 34 laps. 15 drivers on the lead lap. I think we'll see some guys up front stay out. I think we'll see guys at the back. Why not? Come get those four tires. If I got four tires, I might come and get them. So Larson, from the back, from 29th in line, didn't get halfway through the field on this run. He's up to 12th place now. But yeah, but let's remember, he started tail end, too. So he had to get through some of the lap cars as well as start making his way through some of the lead lap cars. I think he did a pretty nice job. But yeah, it's going to be really difficult for him to get all the way up front if he comes down pit road with these leaders. But I did like I watched him to, to the leaders and he didn't lose a lot of track position, maybe a half a lap, but no more than that. And that's hard to do when you're in the backpacker trying to work through traffic sure. and, and maintain some track position. Pit road should open this time. Menard 
stayed on the racetrack after getting into the back of Casey Kane. So, so he's able to continue. And here they come. Oh, four stayed out. He dove back out. Kevin Harvick. Jamie. And Rodney Childers just told Kevin Harvick, if it's fast enough, don't come. And you saw him. He's staying on the track. Meanwhile, the 48 and the 78. And Jimmy Johnson saying he's lazy on the front end in one and two. Perfect in three and four. It'll be a four-tire stop. The 78 of Martin Truex Jr. said the nose is just a little slow. But the balance overall pretty good at both ends of the racetrack. Definitely been one of the fastest cars all day long for the 78. Let's go to the front side in Matt. We've heard so much about the track changing through different segments today of the race. And Joey Logano saying the track just continues to stay free during that last segment, that run there. He says he needs to be much tighter to hustle the race car. Now he's adjusted with a track bar adjuster inside the race car, but that helps him turn, but it also hurts his entry. Adjustment on the 22, and he's away. Truex Johnson Larson out first. Ryan Newman picked up a lot of spots with a two tire change. Oh, Martin Truex speeding. Well, you know, I saw him go to the Jimmy Johnson, beat him off the back straightaway pit road, and then they went around the corner of the 78 room, went right to the inside run, passed him. Obviously, carrying too much speed to make that move happen. <laughs> Unbelievable. I just don't know. So here they go. Jimmy goes by him on the outside. I think Martin thought because he was down on the inside, Jimmy's up on the outside. He was riding that tight radius and, and the prosecution rests. Yeah. All right, here's an eBay Motors race break. We've got 34 laps to go. We've had two different grooves, not the middle, the outside and the bottom side. We've got a lot of different strategies. Kevin Harvick now with no tires, some drivers with two, some drivers with four. This is just the way we like it. Let's mix it all up and see what's going to happen over these last 30 laps. It's a short track shootout. This is like a Saturday night special right here, a 30 lapper. And uh, the guy that's going to be the most aggressive is the guy that's going to win this race. I mean, I, I've been holding my breath this whole race. I can't imagine <laughs> what these drivers are going through. This has been an incredible race. A lot of different lead changes, different grooves, and now we've got different strategies. <laughs> Hold on tight, folks. Well, we'll see who can get to the front and who can stay at the front as we get one to go. Kevin Harvick, who did not stop, alongside Denny Hamlin. And here's audio from Martin Truex. Out of the corner, pushed it too much, I guess. But it's seven, it looks like you want it. But I was on the inside of the 48, so that could be why. Yeah, pit, the speeding, excuse me, speeds are measured by NASCAR. Time over distance. And they measure the distance around pit road. And if you are around the corner, at a smaller piece of that pie where the distance is less, you've really got to watch your speed. Yep. Green flag. What I'm anxious to see is what kind of speed the four Kevin Harvick has with these older tires. Now, there's some cars up there that, uh, you know, could be setting ducks, but I've said that before and it worked out for some of these guys. Well, how about that number one pit stall for the 42 of Larson? Pretty awesome for him. I know he only took two tires, but uh, you know, got great track position. Sure helped him pick up. You got to admit, I mean, 11 of those 13 spots he was missing. Yeah, Larson is he's out of it. He's got no chance. Now he's back in it with a pretty good chance. Hamlin with just two tires. Logano getting a little impatient with Johnson. Stenhouse three wide. Try to use up Trevor Bain right there in the back straightaway and skates off into turn three. Oh man, he is using that high line. Wow, he is going somewhere, yeah, boys. Is. This is gonna get dicey. What's that, what's that 17 car accelerate up off the corner? Whoa, Whoa. contact between the 20 of Kenseth and Logano. Yep, made a little contact. Not three momentum. wide with Boyer on the inside. Ricky Stenhouse is riding a rocket here. Well, he did that exact same thing here at this race in August. He was flying at the end, making all kinds of passes on the restart. Speaking of passes, second place, Larson. <laughs> what, a, what a comeback. Man, I love it. Kid, he doesn't know when to quit. The California kid, he don't know when to wow, quit. Wow, look how fast he is off of turn two. He Huge goes, momentum. He'll do a dive bomb right here. Beep, yeah. beep. Coming through. <laughs> coming down the bottom. Look out. Do the wow. dive bomb. Little crossover move. 
Harvick's got to run the bottom. Oh, no, he goes to the top. This car just wasn't as good around the bottom that last time. Smart move. Better not fool around here too long. That 48 is right there looking to get the lead. Jimmy's going to take away the bottom. Johnson, where, are we near Johnson City? <laughs> Very. We may have to move this place to Johnson City. Boy, yeah, Jimmy's doing a great job rolling around the bottom, being real patient. Look at that car, hooking that bottom. He's working that wheel. But look at the launch. Larson gets off the corner in the high lane. Not that great going in, but he's got great speed coming off. Uh-oh, 55 up here, lap car. Where's he going to go? It could be a difference. It's, moving, it's the moving chicane of Derek Cope, now 34 laps down. Ooh, he's right Boy, up Jimmy there. Johnson just barely was able to get behind Kevin Harvick yep. right there. Now, to Cope's credit, he's been very consistent. He's run the high line all day, trying to stay out of the way. Boy, that's an opportunity right there for Jimmy Johnson. It's going to be really hard to complete this pass on the inside. Tell you what, that Kevin Harvick is doing a great job of hanging on to the lead, but that Johnson car is a little quicker. Guys, we talked about a mixed bag. Kevin Harvick stayed out that last stop. Jimmy Johnson, Chad Canals, the 48, four fresh tires. Chad Johnson and Larson, two left sides only. 48, keep it up, baby. I need really good laps. 20 more. And now it's a four horse race. Clint Boyer is right there as well. Well, and I think Jimmy Johnson just showed Kyle Larson the way through there by doing it on the bottom. I don't know if Larson's two tires are going to be enough to do it, but Clint Boyer's four might be. Yeah, Larson can't run the bottom. He tries to. He's just a little too tight on the bottom, looks like. Yeah, he needed to be even more aggressive, which I don't know how he could be more aggressive to get by Kevin Harvick. Had he got by Kevin Harvick, I don't know if Jimmy Johnson had anything for him up top. Meanwhile, Martin Truex mired in traffic. He's come about halfway through the field to 13th, but can't get any further. Tied hey, hey. up there right behind McMurray and Bain fighting side by side. What about that Clint Boyer guy? I mean, look where he is all of a sudden. We're talking Boyer. He's running up here in third place. Clint Boyer had a speeding penalty back in lap 61. You're going to have one. That's when you want to have it. Not well, lap. Larson had one at lap 421, and they're both right up there fighting for the top four. Yeah. Boyer did a great job of hooking the, the bottom right there, getting a good launch off of turn two. If he can do that again down here, one and two, he'll complete this pass with Kevin Harvick. Working on his teammate. There He's it got is. him. He's got him. 16 laps to go, Larry. Yes, sir. It's time for Larry McDaddy's race trends. <laughs> <laughs> the average of the last caution in the last 10 spring races here at Bristol, 14 to go and five out of 10 times overtime. Wow. Well, Larry, I see some guys that are going to cause overtime. I can tell you. They are racing hard all over this racetrack. You know, you talked about this earlier, 2DW. That's Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth is up there battling for fifth place right now. Unbelievable. Clint Boyer in second place. How about that? Good job, bud. Let's go in this race. All those other guys have worked hard for you. Turn that rear mirror off, man. Pay windows wide open. <laughs> <laughs> the dirt track boys understand that pay window. <laughs> Vince. It's really impressive what Clint Boyer and crew chief Mike Bugaravich have done. They have really become a good combination driver and crew chief, and we're starting to see it. Remember last year, three different drivers in the 14 prior to Clint coming in this season as the full-time guy. They're still developing their notebook together, man. Once they get it together, I think that 14 is going to be a regular up there. Yes, I tell you right now, if that 48 car Jimmy Johnson, if he gets hung up here in very much traffic, Clint Boyer is going to be all over the back of his bumper. He is closing in a hurry. Yeah, they're definitely coming up on some lap traffic. Jimmy's been doing a great job picking his way through traffic all day today. No more crucial than right now. Ten laps to go. You give us three minutes, I think we're going to give you a heck of a finish here. <laughs> yeah. Johnson did a nice job. Jimmy did a nice job of getting by those two slow cars. 15 and a 47, it's wrecked. That gave him a little breathing room between him and Clint Boyer. It's about 1.3 seconds. Now, just ahead of Jimmy is Greg Galding, the rookie, Derek Cope again, uh, Corey LaJoy, who's a couple laps down, and then Eric Jones. So he's going to have some traffic to negotiate before this one's over. Now, they're using pretty much a, the 23s on the bottom, 55 up around the top. 
think it's going to take something pretty serious so to for to hold Jimmy up for the 14 to catch him. Third place race right here. Boy, it has turned into quite the third place race. Larson's been working on the four of Kevin Harvick. He's definitely faster, just can't find a way to get by. And then the 20 of Matt Kenseth. Where has he come from? He is flying. He's probably the fastest car on the track right now. And right behind these guys is Martin Truex. I mean, you got to give a tip of the hat to him. He started in the back, and here he is. He's in the top 10 right now, and wow. maybe get a little bit more. They were three wide down into turn one, and Kenseth got advantage on both Logano and Larson. Matt Kenseth moves up to fourth. Yeah, Larson, oh, oh, oh. Larson just tight. got a little bit wide that last time. Hamlin Had to got, step out of the gas. Hamlin got in the wall. Boy, Matt Kenza did an amazing job taking advantage of that yep. little bit of a bobble by He may not Larson. be done. No, <laughs> he, he might have a shot at getting up to third. Four to go. Man, I don't want this race to be over. Man, not this just, has been fun. Not just, now, not yet. To keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Take a little break, line them up, and start them all over again. <laughs> well, if you listen to Larry Mack, it's not over yet. Yeah. Boy, you know, all I can think about right now is the mistakes that have happened on pit road between speeding on pit road, how it's cost two individuals a shot at maybe a win. And the white flag waves one lap to go sponsored by Credit One Bank. Jimmy Johnson to the high side. He's going to come off turn four and win his 82nd cup victory back to back again for Jimmy Johnson. Boyer second, Harvick third, Kenseth and Logano the top five, Larson, Elliott, Truex, Stenhouse, and Denny Hamlin with worn out tires the top ten. <laughs> Look how excited Jimmy Johnson is. That's a big, big win. This has not been one of his best tracks. Well, just think about it. Last week in Texas, track conditions really treacherous. We start this race today. What's a track like? Treacherous. And he pulled it off. Tony Stewart, the last time his number 14 car finished second was last July at New Hampshire. Was Stewart at the wheel? So great run for Clint Boyer, finishing second for uh, Stewart Haas in that Ford. And for the 11th time in his career, Jimmy Johnson has gone back to back. Is that unbelievable? I mean, yes. that is just how good he and that 48 team truly are. Amazing. If, if you wanted something amazing, just open up the record book. And in every category, this cat leads. Every category. His last and only Bristol win was seven years ago. Taking on the checkered flag, Jimmy Johnson. Today is Sunoco fueling victory. 15 cars finished on the lead lap in Thunder Valley. The race came a day late, but boy, was it worth it.
Aerial coverage of Jimmy Johnson's Donuts provided by Goodyear. Superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and on the road. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And when Jimmy was done doing burnouts and capturing the Sunoco flag, he did what I think is a very cool thing. He did an Alan Kowicki style Polish victory lap to salute the fans, much as Alan did here 25 years ago in the first Food City 500. Kowicki winning from the pole and then going on to win the Winston Cup championship that year, 1992. Well, let's hear from the second place finisher. Here's Vince. Yeah, the man that was chasing Jimmy Johnson to the finish line, and that's Clint Boyer. How far have you come that you're a little frustrated as you climb out of the car with second place? Yeah, I mean, you know, you got to put it in perspective. You're right. You know, uh, we've come a long ways with this team. Um, you know, Boog and all these guys, they work so hard. It's a fun group. Uh, everybody at, at, at Haas, you know, uh, um, Stuart Haas Racing. I mean, my teammates are awesome. It's so much fun to work with this group each and every week. Um, you know, hell yeah, you want to be up there and, and win it. But uh, for the day we had, um, I got caught speeding on pit road, put us in the back, we bounced back. Um, you know, the guys kept working on the car and got it better and better. Just appreciate this opportunity that Gene Haas and Tony Stewart gave me. Um, you know, Mobile One, Haas Automation, everybody that's a part of that. Um, you know, Rust Truck Center's Rusty. Damn it, about had one. Um, you know, the Monster Energy, uh, appreciate everything you guys do. Clint Boyer, second place, got a big hug from the team owner, Tony Stewart. Let's go to Jamie. Well, Kyle Larson, he was the car to beat today. 203 laps led. You had a speeding penalty there. You start in the back and you end up finishing sixth. Kyle, what's your takeaway from today? Um, I don't know if we had the car to beat. I thought early on in the race, before all the rubber got laid down, we were really good. Middle part of the race, I didn't think we were very good. And then uh, there at the end, I got the top going uh, really good. So. Um, and then I got that speeding penalty and, and set us back and you know, we had to gamble there for that last stop and take two lefts and we hadn't done that all day and the balance uh, honestly wasn't that bad uh, with our Coda and Bank Chevy with, on two tires. It just four tires just had a little more grip around the bottom for a little bit longer than we did and I had to get to the top early and uh, was just following Kevin hoping he'd make a mistake because I knew I couldn't go down the bottom and, and get by him. So. Uh, had to kind of ride, but um, another good run for us, another top 10. Would have liked to have a top five, but uh, a good point stay for us, and we'll go on to Richmond, I think we're at next, and um, try and do better than we, we've done there in the past and uh, you know, extend on our point lead there. We sure made it fun to watch. Let's go over to Vince. With Joey Logano, fifth place today. You know, at the beginning of the day, we were all wondering what kind of race we were going to see. <laughs> we, it was pretty crazy. How was it from your seat? Uh, crazy, uh, to say the least. The um, Auto Trader Fusion had good speed if the track was really rubbered up uh, on the long run. That's when we were our fastest. And uh, caution, caution, caution at the end. It just the track cleans up. All these the hot tires pick up the rubber, and uh, the race changed. And uh, we didn't quite have the car as fast as it was uh, when the track was rubbered in, in hard. So, uh, you know, we scored some stage points. That's the first time we scored stage points in two stages in a race. So I'm proud of that. Uh, Man, I just thought we had position to, to win it if we can just take off better uh, in a short run um, and then try to hold off that 48. That may have been, put us in position to win this thing, but um, just uh, out of control for the first five, six laps and give up too many spots. Well done. Joey Logano, fifth place. Let's go to victory lane with Matt Yoakum. Took seven years for his second Bristol win, but Jimmy Johnson takes another one in Thunder Valley. It seemed like you were the guy on that final run that found the bottom first and best. Yeah, it was kind of interesting because when the 42 was there, it just created an environment to run the top, and I wasn't as good on the top. Uh, with the 42 not being up there in that first couple of cars, um, you know, the, the bottom was really where it was at for the short run, and this low Chevrolet was flying. Uh, so happy to give everybody at A.O. Smith a, a good ride on the quarter panel this weekend. Um, but we wouldn't be here without a ton of support from Valvoline, Gatorade, the fans, Lowe's, Chevrolet. Um, it was track's been difficult over the years. And we really hit on something um, Saturday, yeah, Saturday afternoon in that, that last practice session around the bottom. And it's honestly, it's what I've been looking for here for 16 years. And we finally figured it out. So I'm very, very happy. And I just want to give a shout out to, to Shani, Evie, and Lydia at home. I wish the girls were with me. I uh, can't wait to see you soon. 
When you scored your seventh championship, tying Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt, you were so humbled about being included into their class. Now you're one win away from Hall of Famer Kelly Yarbrough and two from Darrell Waltrip and Bobby Allison. That's just mind blowing. Um, it, you know, I wouldn't be here without Mr. Hendrick's support. And just talk to you on the phone, boss. Uh, thank you once again for believing in me, Jeff Gordon for believing in me, um, for Hendrick Motorsports to make this this job kind of a family environment for all of us to thrive in. It's been a perfect environment for me, Chad Canals. This. Uh, a consistent group of guys behind me for through all these years has led to the environment to win 82 races or whatever it is, which is just insane. So truly humbled, um, excited to win back-to-back -back races, excited to win at Bristol, and uh, I guess I'll be at Indy testing the next two days, and I'll show up in Richmond and try again. Congratulations, Mike. Yes. All right, Jimmy Johnson's career, he's won one of every seven starts in the Cup Series. Here are your point standings. Kyle Larson retains the point lead. Chase Elliott second, Truex third, Logano, Keselowski teammates fourth and fifth. Jimmy Johnson there, sixth place. Those points are so important, Mike, just like what happened here. If we get qualifying rained out, you start to race by those points, and that's big, has been for Kyle Larson. So Hendrick Motorsports scores its 11th Bristol win. 247 cup wins overall, beating Clint Boyer by 1.2 seconds in Bristol. Back to back for Jimmy Johnson. On goes the wind sticker for the second time in as many races. Here's Chris Neville. Martin, you were one of the strongest cars all day. You led 116 laps, but the speeding penalty, how disappointed was that? 
Yeah, I mean, we were going for it, you know. Uh, wish we could have had a shot there just to see if we could have won. I, Furniture Row, uh, Denver Mattress, Toyota. Uh, everybody that helps us make this program right, Toyota, TRD, I mean, Five Hour, Wix, Bass Pro, just everybody, uh, auto owners. I mean, it's, it's the best run we've had here in a long time. So, uh, you know, it's bittersweet. I uh, wish we could have seen if we could have beat 48. We were real, really, really close right there before that last caution. So, yeah, it is what it is. You're trying to get all you can get, and sometimes you cross the line. Today we cross the line. So, uh, all in all, it was uh, an awesome day, a lot of fun. I think if the VHT had, had not wore out quite as bad, we'd have really killed them. But uh, the top lane came in, and some guys could run that better than I could. All in all, a good day, and uh, it was a lot of fun out there. Thanks, Martin. Martin Truex was really great around the bottom. Now, Jimmy Johnson, in scoring his 82nd win, led three times today, but he didn't even take the lead for the first time until about 100 laps to go. I think he and Chad Knauss, that's kind of their strategy. You think about Texas, 500-mile race, he doesn't really show much to get middle or latter part of the race. Here today, we didn't see a lot of him. We didn't hear a lot of him until middle, latter stages of the race. That's just a veteran driver with a smart crew chief, knows how to manage 500 laps around this little racetrack. A lot of drivers showed great speed throughout the day. But Jimmy wasn't one of them. I, I don't recall a part in the race where he was so much faster than everybody else. Just at the end, he was so much better than but, everybody but this else. This is just what they do to other teams. This is how good they are. They force other teams to push harder and make mistakes, like what happened with Martin Truex Jr. on pit road. He knew that was his opportunity to win, pushed it a little bit too hard, speeding on pit road. We saw a speeding penalty with uh, Larson as well leaving pit road. And that's a lot of it of just, that's what you do. When you're a great driver and a great team, you sometimes don't always just go out there and dominate. You force others to make those kinds of mistakes. So now it's off to Richmond for next Sunday. But tonight on Fox, the spring premiere of Gotham at 8 and the season finale of APB at 9. Tonight on FS1, NASCAR Race Hub, 6 p.m. Eastern. And the Monster Energy Bristol Race will re-air tonight at midnight on FS1. Friday coverage begins from Richmond with practice and qualifying. Sunday, you'll see the Toyota Owners 400 beginning with race day on FS1, and the race is on Fox. Fox Sports congratulates Jimmy Johnson on his 82nd Career Cup victory in Bristol. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.